knows what he's talking about, don't you? Whoa, Come on, whoa, give us some of your wisdom. What's going on here, Joe? What's going on here, Greg? You two gonna use those things or just stand there looking at it? What are you waiting for, Porco? Fire on, away! Hold on, hold oh, on. Oh, come on, he's disturbing the peace. Really... You blockhead, you mother... Joseph! Let me talk to him. Wait a minute, let me talk to him. Joe, you have gotta calm down and back off before this thing gets out of hand. Yeah, well, these flunkies need a lesson of manners. <clears throat> I've gotta take you in now, don't you know that, Joe? Yeah, I know. The question is, do I let him use those things on you, or are you going to come with me as usual? I'll go with you, but I ain't going to like it. You never do. <laughs> huh. How long, Greg, before you you can't get here in time? How long before you see what the rest of us see? See what, Ira? That he is not worth the time nor the effort. That he's what's decaying this city. He's rotting it away. I've had just about enough of your inability to maintain the peace around here. All these people wanted was enjoy a nice walk around our fine town, and that fool comes and destroys it. Have a nice day, Ira. Oh. I will be placing a call to your superior. And believe me when I tell you that I will put an end to your short and so far very unproductive career in law enforcement. Oh. I hate these calls. Seems to be getting worse every time. I don't know how much longer he's gonna last. One out of one, go ahead. En route to detox with one on board. Mr. Devon. Copy that. Uh, en route from Highway 58 in Washington. Sick back here. Just be quiet back there, Joe. You're the one who put me back here. No, Joe, you put yourself back there. Yeah, you, you, you bitch that way. <laughs> oh, giddy. Golden Peaks, the crappiest part of town. All those people wasting the government's money, huh? Enough, Joe. It's true, ain't it? Can't even mow the lawns. That's enough. Hey, Russ, what's going on? Hey, Officer Knox, they're at it again. Right behind the trailer. One out of one? Where's that other unit? How could you do that? You're such an idiot. He ain't the only one, neither. What? That's enough, sir. That's enough. Put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your head. Oh, who's the big man now, huh? Do you have any weapons uh, on you? Anything you need to know about? Screw you! Oh, take that as a yes. I hope they beat you real bad. Uh, I'm you, pig. Okay, let's go have a seat. Uh, busy day. Yeah, unfortunately. Transport? Wants to take one of these two? I'll take two. Sure. Sir, I'm gonna get you up. You're gonna come with me. Get on up. 
You're gonna go this way, watch your step on the curb. Watch your step. Right this way. Well, we did not end up with Joe today. Fine with this one. I hate guys like that. He's a jerk. Hey, that's enough. Get in the car. Watch your head. Hey, what is the deal with Knox? Thinks he can save the guy. It's kind of a good thing he's trying though, right? Come on, let's get Ike Turner here to his new room. Hey, Knox. Yeah? I have some more cases and files for you. How's he doing? I don't know. It's like we go out there doing our best to make things better and uh, some days it's hard to tell if we're making a difference. I mean, all the policies, the, the communication services this city has to offer. It seems like that we communicate less and we talk less than we ever did before. And take Main Street. All the improvements, the renovations, to all the roads, the buildings, for what? I know, I know it's all great. Don't get me wrong. I just wish there was a way to renovate some of the people in this town. Like I said, it's just hard to tell if we're making any difference, that's all. Maybe people just don't want anything different. Yeah, maybe. We could use some help down here. Pastor, you do some pretty good work. Thanks, June. I think it's coming along pretty nice. Yes, yes it is. So, tell me again how much I owe you for all of this. Uh, June, why don't we just call this helping out? I don't want uh, and I will not have any of that nonsense, young man. You have worked hard and you should get paid for it. From what I can see, you have more than earned it. Well, thank you. Come on. One, two, three, four, and five. Now, when you finish with the rest of the yard work, you come back and see me, and I will have a tall glass of my ice-cold, fresh-squeezed lemonade just for you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> wonderful work. Simply wonderful. Here, let me give you a hand with that. Woo. 
Thanks. Ben Cooper. Russ McKay. I'm the uh, manager around here. Oh, okay. Um, I'm uh, the new pastor at Golden Hills Life Church. Oh. So you've been doing some work on June's place? Yeah, I've been helping her out a little bit. Looks like you do great work. Thanks. Hey, uh, how much is she paying you? Uh, um, let's just say she makes a mean glass of lemonade. <laughs> I've had that lemonade. <laughs> hey, it was good to meet you, Russ. You too, Ben. Yeah, we'll see you. Thank you. Such a lonely man, keeping it quiet, and whenever he takes a fall, somebody takes his. All right, thank you. Thanks so much. Have a good night. You too. Sorry, Joe. You're short. How short am I? Well, it's 1019. What'd I give you? 1018? Really? Can't we just call it close enough? Come on, you fool! You're holding up the line! Sorry. like this. Every time you or I take a drink of it, it's like we're doing it together, right? Come on. You. Oh, I'm sick of you. Yeah. You need to get out of here. I ain't going nowhere. You know, I'm calling the cops and this Fine, time they're gonna them. keep Since you. You're a moron. Let me help you out with the number. It's nine one one. Hey, hey, hey. Ben Whoa. Cooper. I'm the pastor at Golden Hills Life Church. I'm new. Good for you. Move. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what do you think is gonna happen here? I'm gonna teach this drunk a lesson. Wait, That's what's gonna happen. For you, cockroach. Come right. on. Hey, hold look, on. look, look. If I can get him to leave, you don't have to punch his teeth in. Go for it. Hey, buddy. Ben Cooper. Joe. Hey, Joe. Good to meet you. Yeah, you a preacher? Oh, yeah. Among other things. You gonna tell me I need Jesus? 
Do you? I need to be left alone, you idiot. Okay, okay. All right, look, look. He said if you let him be, he would let you. Hey, be. I didn't start it, okay, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, all right. You need to end it by walking away. Fine. I don't want to be here anyway, Ginger. There you go. He's at last, right? Not really. He will be back. He always is. Good try, though. Welcome home, Ben. So you see, son, even though it's a small dot on the map, it's our dot. It belongs to us. We have to be responsible for what happens here. We've been given so much in terms of wealth and resources, and as part of that, we've taken up a charge to aid our city in becoming its best. Does that make sense? That's why my grandfather founded the Golden Trader Society with those businesses and folks. We want to continue to work to better our society and the surrounding community. When you grow up and take over the companies and the store and all our land, the responsibilities will then come to you. Yes, Mayor, I agree. It sounds like a great idea in theory. Who wouldn't want to try to improve that area? My only concern is what it might cost our fine people and how it might force further sacrifices to our well-established tradition and golden charm. Sure, sure, but how many other golden community mainstays will suffer if you follow through on this? Think about it, man. If you invest our hard-earned dollars on a rundown mobile home park that's stacking up health and safety violations and, and filled with helpless charity cases, next thing you know, others just like them will want a handout as well. It might be better to simply move on and restore some dignity to the area. Well, you have my thoughts on the situation, Mr. Mayor. If you do decide to follow through on this, just keep in mind the considerable pull that myself and the GTS have. I would really hate to be in opposition to you. Well, good. That's great. I'm glad you'll be speaking further to the council about that. Fine. That's great. Well, thank you for your time, and we'll talk later. Uh-huh. Okay. Goodbye. Well... Let's just hope they change their mind. The mayor and his council, uh, despite their growing courage and their ever stiffening backbone, most likely won't risk losing our support over the issue. I hope not. It's true we're all given free will to make our own choices, but you know, what better way to show our devotion and faith in him than to use that free will to choose to follow his direction. I grew up here, graduated from the high school, went to the stores here. I spent years of my youth roaming the streets. And from time to time, I may have gotten into a little bit of trouble. <laughs> but my returning home after years in Portland was not a choice Marie and I made using some rational thought process. We were led so strongly to this very place at this very time. We just chose to obey God's calling. To say that I know what that calling is going to be, that'd be a lie. And you know, since we're in church, I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a burden on my heart. That's something I just can't explain away. I, I know there's a purpose for us being called. Maybe it's, maybe it's a place, maybe it's even a person. Oh, amen, preacher man, amen. <laughs> this your family? Where's your wife? <laughs> Congratulations. 
Hey, Breacher. Hey, Joe. <laughs> hey, get your hands off okay. me. Okay, 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 calm down. Babe, maybe we can get you some coffee. I don't want no coffee. I brought my own drink. Thank you very much. Joe, come on, let's have a seat. Hey, I'm leaving, all right? You people are all the same. You talk and you talk and you talk, but you don't do nothing! I'm not your little project, all right? I don't need you and I don't need your God! Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Amen, officers. What can I do you for? Joe, we got another complaint. Really? For what? Public intoxication, danger to yourself or others. You can pick to me, Joe. Can't you just wait until I'm done? No, give me the bottle. Nope. <laughs> Come on, you can't even stand up straight. The heck I can't. <laughs> Whoa! Joe, come on! That's not a hole, right? Uh, there's no hole. Uh, there's a hole there, a divot, whatever you want to call it, all right? Just give me another test. Come on, I'm not drunk. Come on, Bruno, give me one more test. Come on, I can pass. Give me another test. Give me another test. Come on. Fine, stick out your fingers. Touch your nose. Not a problem. Seem to find my nose. My feet were enough. Turn around, around put your hands off me. Joe, you're coming with me. Just go get knocked. I don't need knocks. I don't need knocks. Joe, out. get off of me. Stop oh. resisting. I will take oh. you, Joe. Don't tase me. Don't tase me. Don't tase me. Down, Joe. Oh. You get ready to tase him if he's going to continue. He's going to resist again. We got him. Are you good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just tired of this. That's understandable. What next? You search him. I'll call it in. You okay, Joe? Mm -hmm. Two out of one. You got one in custody. We're gonna sit you up. You need to get my hat. I'll get your hat. <laughs> Come on, Joe. One, two. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is Officer Knox. Uh, can I talk to the on-site manager, please? Uh, of course. One moment, please. Okay, thank you. Officer Knox, it's Dr. Allen. Hi, Dr. Allen. Uh, listen, I was hoping I could get some more information on Joe's condition. Uh, what, what, what can you tell me? Doctor. Okay, Greg. I, I can tell you that his blood work is very concerning. People that drink that much go into liver failure. Frankly, I'm surprised he's still alive. Listen, Greg. I know you care about him. If he 
he doesn't stop drinking now, he'll be dead soon. Really soon. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay, great. Attention, everyone. We have your attention. Attention, everyone. Uh, why don't we proceed and come to order? Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out tonight to the Connected Neighbors meeting sponsored by the Golden Traders Society. Uh, we do have a variety of items slated for this evening, but I'd like to address an issue right off the top. I've just finished some research on the subject. Of course, I'm speaking of the growing marginal population. Let me just start by saying this. The Golden Traders Society has a, a long tradition of uh, community improvement and uh, dedication to economic, societal, and humanitarian enrichment. Uh, as many of you know, my great-grandfather founded the GTS, and it has served this growing community for many years. But I fear that we are losing our rich identity. Yeah, that's right. The findings I have in my hand indicate that the downtown businesses and the real estate market could suffer drastically because of this group's presence in our downtown street, which of course increases the police presence due to fighting and disturbances of the public peace. These marginal areas could drive down the real estate market. Now, I know you're probably thinking, of course, Ira is concerned about property values, but I tell you, this is not insider news, folks. Those people could and most likely will drag land prices down after we have worked so hard to raise them. But just think about all the work done downtown alone. Now, I don't want you to think I'm the only one that's concerned about this, so I have asked some other well-respected community members to speak tonight. Okay, Phil, won't you go ahead and stand up and address him? Uh, Phil, by the way, if you don't know him, runs one of the tour bus routes that goes around town. Thank you, Ira. My name's Phil Cole. Like Ira said, I run the tours in town. And after some serious complaints and coming to the realization that I can't avoid them anymore, I finally had to change my routes, avoiding parts of Main Street and the surrounding parks they have become too much of an eyesore, and I can't stand showing that to visitors. I mean, that's not who we are. The truth is, I'm not sure how it's going to affect my business. But it's something that had to be done. It's a sacrifice I had to make. After all, that representation of Golden just won't work. We have to protect our history and we have to try and get back to the things that made us great. Well, we understand why you did that, Phil. Uh, I think we're all sorry that you had to make such a sacrifice. Is there anything we can do to assist you in this time? Yeah. Get rid of them. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for sharing that with us, Phil. Um, Let's see, Ed Mose has a statement for us. Ed, go ahead. Hello, y'all. Like Ira said, I'm Ed Mose. I own the shoe and leather repair shop down on Main Street. Well, it was last week one night when I was closing up shop. I headed out back to empty the trash at the bin, and one of them asked me for some change. I must say, in all my years, and I've been here for a few. <laughs> in all my years, I've never had to deal with a beggar at my back door, and I don't think I should have to neither. We need to clean this town up. <laughs> Isn't that your job, Officer Knox? To clean up this town? To rid it of all the bad elements? I'm sure, Ed, that Greg is doing all he can, but let's be honest. We need to take some actions ourselves as well. Yes. Absolutely. Marie, 
three, I'm telling you, it was disturbing. Uh, they were totally tearing into each other. I can't believe people would even talk. I, I gotta go, babe. I gotta help somebody. Hey, Joe? Joe? Oh, please don't be dead. Uh, don't go, Johnny. Don't go. Please, Johnny. Uh, yeah, I, I need an ambulance or something. Okay, sir, where are you? I'm in the park over off Main. What's your name? Uh, it's Ben. Cooper. Okay, Ben, what's the emergency there? I'm, I'm with a guy that's passed out in the park. Do you know who he is? Kinda. I, I think his name is Joe. No, I, I don't know his last name. He, he's drunk and passed out in the park. He, he needs some help. Hello? Yes, sir. Someone's on their way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I'm Officer Knox. How's he doing? I, I don't know. I, I saw him slump over, so I, I checked his pulse and called 911. Is, it, is an ambulance coming? Nah. He'll be all right. We just got to get him into dry out. Do you know this guy? Yeah, it's Joe Devon. Wait, like uh, Joey and Johnny Devon? Yeah. You know him? I knew of them, them. Uh, they were older than me and always in trouble. I don't. I didn't Knox. put it together. I'm here, Joe. I, I got you. I know no, you. I need help. Okay, Joe. Okay, Joe. I'm gonna get you help. <coughs> Thanks, uh, Ben Cooper. Thank you, Ben. I'll see you around, I guess. Yeah, okay. Uh, um, what happens now? Well, like I said, I take him to dry out. Okay. Can I go with you? <laughs> no. Why would you want to do that? I just want to make sure he's okay. Listen, Ben. You seem like a nice guy. Don't take me wrong, but uh, who are you? Oh, uh, I'm the new pastor at Golden Hills Life Church. Uh, so this is some kind of community service thing then, huh? No. Listen, I can't take you with me. To do a ride along, you have to fill out all sorts of paperwork. Uh, yeah, ride along. Let's do that. Meet me at the station then? Okay. How long? Are you sure you want to do this? Give me 30 minutes then. Okay. I'll see you there. That's not true. You wouldn't faint. Might. No. Wait, speaking of. Hey, honey. You okay? You're not calling me from jail, are you? Ben? Ben, what'd you do? Nothing. <sighs> Nothing. Do you, do you remember that guy, Joe, that came to the church that day? Uh, yeah. Kind of hard to forget. True. Well, he was he was passed out in the park earlier when we were talking, and and he wasn't doing well. And then and I had to call nine one one, and so I did. And then and then the officer that came out, his name was Greg Knox. And I, I just feel like I need to spend some more time with him, is all. So uh, I'm at the police station, and and I'm going on a ride along. <laughs> you know, you never cease to amaze me. All right, just be careful, Ben, please. I cannot wait to hear about this when you get home. You know I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Bye. He's just calling to tell me that they had a call 911 for this guy in the park, and now he's at the police station and he's going on a ride along to talk to the officer more. What? Yeah, that's my Ben. <laughs>
Unbelievable. I gotta be honest. I'm surprised you still came. Why's that? Well, Ben, we get a lot of pastors, uh, a lot of religious types that come through here that say they want to make a difference, when really all they want to do is prop themselves up, and maybe for a better position. <sighs> they like the prestige of being a, a do-gooder. Is that what you are, Ben? A do-gooder? <laughs> no. I I just want to know what's happening in my community. All right, then. You're going to see it. You're going to see it all. <sighs> what happened to him? Joe? Yeah. That pastor is a long story. We've got an entire ride along, right? <laughs> you knew his brother Johnny? Yeah, I knew of him. Well, the two of them, like they're joined at the hip, they're inseparable. They came from a really rough home. Really bad situation, and they they figured why stick around there when they could leave, so they they did. They got jobs, they worked hard, but uh, Joe was especially bothered and haunted by what their folks had put them through. The way he would escape was into the bottle. And ended up taking Johnny with him. Joe would get drunk, pick fights, do all sorts of crazy things. And Johnny was right there by his side. Then the... Uh, accident happened and what accident I was a responding officer when I arrived I uh, saw Johnny and Joe just standing there helpless they had been drinking and uh, Johnny never saw her they hit a pedestrian. The young girl just walking home. She had died before I got there. Johnny ended up uh, doing, doing some time. And uh, but when he got out of prison, he got a last chance. Worked with Joe on uh, the lawn crew. He stayed clean, you know, for a pretty long time, but uh, something, uh, something triggered him. Johnny was out back on the job, a job that he and Joe had been working on, and uh, it was a summer day. It was an especially hot day. Like I said, something set him off. Uh, who knows? And uh, took the gas caps off and started started huffing up, inhaling the fumes. Joe finished up and went looking for Johnny. It went around back, and that's. when he found his brother's body. Oh. That's rough. 
You know, Joe, he, he might have been a bit of a troublemaker, but man, he loved his brother. The day that Johnny died, Joe just lost it. He, uh, he was gone. I've been trying to keep him out of major trouble ever since. So, um, so you've been on the force a while now, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I've been around a while. I've seen a lot of things. I bet you have. Here we go. One out of one, go ahead. Not surprising. Copy that. En route. Just remember, you wanted to see this. anything like that. Especially oh, for yeah. Shaster. <laughs> Where are we off to there, Twinkle Toes? Church? Yeah. Meet your pastor. It's a good thing you guys showed up when you did. I was afraid I was going to have to get involved. Really, Russ? <laughs> I find it hard to believe that you would uh, step on a spider, let alone use that. Well, now, it depends on the spider. I mean, have you seen those guys with the fangs and the legs? Nasty business. Man. Kind of like it when you guys just showed up once a month. Now you're showing up once a week. I hear you. Two item one. We have two in custody. Is that any weapons on you? Mm -hmm. We're code four. Did you get him, huh? Stop. Get up. Get up. Nice. I'm gonna take the runner in. We'll clean up things here. Thanks. Ben. Picked a heck of a night for a ride along. <laughs> now you get to see the inside of a jail. <laughs> the adrenaline will wear off soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, that was a heck of a body slam you put on him. Dumb, <laughs> but it's still a heck of a move. Yeah, well, I don't think my wife would approve. <laughs> well, I can't speak for your wife, but uh, thank you. you. Sure you want to keep going? Yeah, I need to see us. All right, but no more of that John Wayne stuff, all right? <laughs> Yeah. 
Here you go. This always seems to help me adjust to the long nights. Uh, the realization that it's <laughs> eight in the morning. Thanks. You bet. I don't know, Ben. Finally come to the decision that the best I can be in this community is a is a voice. You know, try to help out where I can. Aid others when I come in contact with them. Greg, I, I don't know how to say this, but there's something seriously missing from this community. Yeah. <laughs> Neighbors. Wait. What did you just say? I said neighbors. Wait, what do you mean by that? Ben, seems like people have gotten selfish. You know, it's all become about me and mine. People used to be neighborly. They used to help each other out whenever they could, you know? They were good neighbors. That's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I say something to amuse you? Uh, no, 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 it's, it's so simple, it's sad, really. <sighs> I'm sorry? Thank you, thank you. I gotta go, okay? I, I, I gotta go, but I, I gotta go. But I'll catch you later, okay? What the heck was that? Still got it. <laughs> Here we are. Again. <laughs> you never left me. Even when everyone else did. You were always there for me. I love being your brother. <laughs> the way you looked up to me. Then I let you down. <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. I, 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 there ain't nobody here to talk to me like you did. I messed up. Should have been me locked up. Should have been me in this thing. You were the better one. You were so smart. And that smile. I'm going to miss you so much. <coughs> I guess this is it. One last drink, huh? <laughs> Goodbye.
Good breath, little brother. Hey, Joe. How you holding up? <laughs> I've been worse. Yeah. Think I was there. <laughs> so, uh, what the heck's going on? How much longer I gotta be in here? I hate being here this long, you know? Joe, I need to, uh... I need to talk to you about something. Okay. Do you remember asking me for help? It's a little fuzzy, but... Uh, Joe, <laughs> this is it. What, holding me a day or two more? No. No. Uh, I found a program. It would go into effect the next time you were picked up drunk. And it wouldn't let you be released when you are sober. Instead, you had to go before a judge. A judge for what? It's a statute. A statute that says... Uh, if there's enough evidence, a judge can order a person into a treatment program against their consent. It's either go into a program or go before a judge. I wouldn't go to jail for it. I beat you so bad right now, you son of a... How could you do this to Joseph, me? Joseph, please. Do you remember asking me for help? Yeah. This is it. I put this affidavit together. It has all our interactions. It has a report of all your contacts with the other officers, with businesses. There's enough here to force you into a program. Joe, I... I don't want to see you end up in prison like your brother, Johnny. I don't want to see you end up dead. I'm not doing this as Officer Knox. Don't you get it, Joe? I'm doing this as your friend. Go ahead, go before a judge. Have him strip all of your choices. Or you can choose to go into a program. It's, it's up to you. Did you know he liked to paint? No, I didn't know that. He was really good too. I bet. Well, how long do I got to be in it? The, the, the program, I mean, how long would it last? About a year. But Joe, there's a chance for off-campus living in a group home. There'll be work options. There'll, there'll be regular meetings. They'll be counseling, Joe. I'll, I'll do it. I'll enter the program. I'm proud of you, Joe. I'm real proud of you. I'll be back. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart 
and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. We as a church know and strive to meet the first commandment. And we love him wholeheartedly. But I've got to be honest. We're not very good at the second one. I've spent a lot of time thinking about what type of pastor I should be and, and what this congregation should look like. I've been carrying around a burden. Just this sense that something more was needed by me and quite frankly by all of us. You see, I don't want to pastor just this church. I want to be a pastor to this community, to step outside the church walls and go beyond programs and outreach ministries. I want this church to look like our community, but with one major difference, that we become great at the second commandment, the second greatest commandment, to love our neighbors as ourselves. It's time. It's time that, that our actions speak louder than our words. It is time we become the golden rule. Okay? Yes. Uh, fine, thank you. Please continue, Warren. Okay. So like I was saying, what the mayor and the council is suggesting is to provide the park with funds to upgrade the living standards. You know, roofing, heating, AC, plumbing, basic stuff. The mayor wants to try and avoid shutting the park down and putting more people on the streets. The park has some pretty serious violations. I checked, and the city recently sent a letter with some deadlines. What do you think? I think to spend a single dime on a property like that would be a waste. Not to mention it's fast becoming the first choice of the very element that we're seeking to get rid of. If that property were mine, I would level it, turning into something useful. Unfortunately, we can't exactly say that now, can we? What we need to do is find a way to get rid of that park. Until then, we need to buy some time. Maybe we can suggest to the council to allow us to do some research and come up with some other options to improve that area. Okay. I like that. What are the options? I'll come up with something and let everybody know when I have it. Now, I should get back to preparing for our meeting tonight. All right. I'll see you later. Thanks, Warren.
Hey, Russ. Faster? How's it going? <sighs> Back for more punishment, huh? Oh, yeah. There's a lot to be done. I just, you know, figured I'd lend a hand. Yeah. Hey, uh... How much are you charging these days? Sorry. No, that's okay. Russ, um, something you want to talk about? Oh. <laughs> well. You, uh, you got a minute? Sure thing. Okay. okay. Hello, Mr. Northrop. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Right this way. Make yourself comfortable. Can I get you any coffee? No, thank you. All right, I'll let Mr. Johnson know you're here. What'd you find? Well, some uh, pretty interesting stuff. Did you know that this park is actually one of the oldest parts of Golden? Uh, the estimated value of the land, right around a million dollars, as is. It's owned by a private party out of state. It used to be a place for travelers in the early 1900s, a site for some rallies, and a former mayor once lived at the park, actually. I see. I don't know uh, what else you might want from me on this, but the property is not for sale. I know it's not for sale yet. What I'm looking to do is separate the park from the land. I, I don't know if I follow. I want to get rid of the park, Don. I'm tired of driving by it. I'm tired of the rundown side of it. It's time for it to go away permanently. I, I don't know what you want from me. I, I, I can't do anything illegal. I don't want to do anything illegal either, Don. It's time we move in, provide a solution, and do the right thing, despite the park owner, the tenants, we? the city, or any... Yes, Don, we the Golden Traders Society. We're gonna swoop in and save the day and turn a historical mistake into a monument of good. Look, we could uh, expand the school. We could build some much needed housing. We could even open a park dedicated to our rich history. That is, if we make the bold move. I don't know, it just seems a little conniving to me. I don't know if you have what it takes to be my agent anymore or not, Don. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to consider finding someone else to manage all my properties. So, what are the things that have to be done?
It's a pretty long list. Ben, without that funding from the city, my owners don't stand a chance here. I mean, we're talking minimum wage. Elderly folk, family, families. <clears throat> I don't, I don't know how we're gonna do this. Russ, what, what can I do to help? <clears throat> well, I was hoping you, you might want to do some of the work. I've seen the way you care for June and... Uh, I don't know, something inside me told me to ask. You know, you got a lot on your plate. You got your church and you got a table to put food on. I mean, it's, you know what? Russ, look, I'll tell you what. Let's just start by looking at some of this stuff. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Hey. We're neighbors. <laughs> hey, hon. How you doing? Ben, what's on your mind? Russ, um, over at Golden Peaks, mm -hmm. he asked if he could talk with me, and... Um, I thought maybe he had some questions about church or something, and he shows me this list from the city. It's a letter saying that the tenants over there are facing some serious violations, hmm. and then he's got this whole list of fixes that need to be done. Mm -hmm. He asked if I'd be willing to help, you know, fix the trailers and stuff, and so he showed me around, and I mean, there were some serious issues with some of them. I mean, like, like roofs and rotted decks and paint and windows and plumbing and heat, uh, yard work. <laughs> just, that's just what we could see. I mean, I can't imagine if we looked hard enough what we'd find. It's just a, it's a long list. Well, that's a lot of consistent work. I mean, you can do all that, right? Yeah. What, what's wrong? I thought that would be a good thing. Marie, I don't think I'm supposed to charge. Wait, what? Why would you charge? It feels like the right place to start being a neighbor. Honey, that's a lot of work. Who's gonna pay for that? You've got labor, you have materials. I mean, where, how do you start something like that? I don't know. Okay, I wanna see it. What? No, I want to see it. I want to go over there right now and I want to see it. Okay. Okay? Okay.
We can't charge them. But we are doing this. This is right. This is... This is right. And we can make a difference here. Now. Now what? I don't know. I mean, it's not like they make a playbook for this. Well, we need one. What we need is an army. All right, uh, let's keep this moving. Uh, next up, we have a new speaker, um, Ben Cooper. All right, Ben, go ahead. Well, uh, <laughs> some of you might know me or, or remember me from a younger age, but um, I'm Ben Cooper. I'm the pastor at Golden Hills Life Church. Uh, I'm not here tonight as a pastor, but more like a neighbor on behalf of a neighbor, uh, Russ McKay. The manager at Golden Peaks, that's the uh, mobile home park over on 3rd. Uh, he just received a laundry list of fixes that need to be done on the trailers there. And, and I was talking with him, and, and one of his major concerns is that you know, since the park is made up mainly of low income, affording these fixes is a huge stretch. So I, I thought I'd come and ask for some help. Now, I can do some of the work, but, but it'd sure be great to you know have some, some extra hands and or maybe some donations until financial relief comes from the city and the neighborhood grant program. Now, I'm thinking, you know, going over there every Saturday, starting this Saturday, and we'll just work on whatever projects we have the funds for. Uh, I think we'll start with the roof. Excuse me, Ben. I apologize for interrupting, but that park is pretty far gone, is it not? Well, what do you mean by far gone, sir? Well, I'm very familiar with the situation over there. I have done some research on my own, and... Honestly, son, it might be better for you to let this one go and try for another area. Um, excuse me, sir. I, I hope I'm not being rude, but, you know, there are elderly folks and, and families and people just trying to get by there. If, if, if we don't step in and help, then they can end up on the streets or worse. I, I can't imagine anybody would want that. Look, Pastor Ben, there are several organizations uh, already in place to aid those who seek it. Uh... What programs are you referring to, sir? Well, Reverend Rick here has a food pantry out of his church. And Franklin, his nonprofit, works with other service providers and organizations to bring projects and volunteers together. Maybe you could seek their advice on maybe where would be a better place for you to get involved. Uh, sir. Ira. You can call me Ira. All right. Ira, I've been to those sites and I've made some phone calls. And all I've learned is that I need an appointment or uh, their services are not easy to access. Now, I'm not looking to start a nonprofit or some organization. I, I just want to help my neighbors fix up their homes. Well, Ben, I'm just telling you that you will not find assistance here. Look, I know you all have had some concerns with the marginals of the city. But I thought if I brought a way to keep people from becoming homeless or a way to help out, you might step up, but this reaction? I didn't see this coming. Can you tell me why you're so quick to dismiss this? Because, young man, it, It's Ben. You can call me Ben. Because, Ben, this group of individuals has managed to decay our cities by infesting our neighborhoods and draining our resources. Now, the GTS and other concerned citizens of this fine community are committed to the betterment of the city, not the encouragement of further rot. And as such, it is our responsibility to lead us away from further damage. What damage are you talking about? What damage? The damage done when those people walk the streets, beg for money, yelling at patrons, drunk. But what about when reckless behavior costs someone their life? I will not tolerate this cancer to spread any further. And those people are this city's cancer. They are our public enemy number one. Public enemy number one? Do you hear yourself right now? There could be rapists and murderers and child molesters out there, and you're concerned with a few people trying to find a warm place to stay and some food to eat? You want an enemy to fight? How about poverty, not the poor? Will that be all? No! That's all I have to say here today. 
I'll be at the park at 8 a.m. on Saturday if anybody would like to help. Thank you for your time. Hey, Ben, Ben, wait. You okay? Greg, I cannot believe that just happened. There's no way they're that ignorant. Listen, I... Uh, hey. Hey, Art. Hey. I just want to say, man, I agree with you 100%. I want to help out if I can. You know, I, I own Smith's Harbor right down the street. I'd love to take a look at that list and see how I can help out. <laughs> you know, I also know some guys that can swing a hammer pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you say, uh, come by tomorrow, take a look at that list, and we'll put something together for Saturday? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, bro. Thanks, All bro. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I think we both know that girl is checking me out, all right? Okay, bro. Whatever gives you the confidence to sleep oh, at night. Okay, okay, yeah. Oh, give me a drink then, all right? <laughs> Whatever. You know, maybe she's into short guys. Yeah? <laughs> all right, let's go. Give me the keys. There you go. Take them. They're right there. Come on. We'll take them. Whoop. Come on. Whoop. You're we'll not take driving. Them. Give me yeah. the, you the keys. Whoop. Whoop. Look at yourself. You're not driving. <laughs> the heck I ain't. Yeah, you're in great shape to drive. Let yeah. me have a drink then. Hey, spirit. Hey, man. Too slow, bro. Not cool. You know, I'm older and I should be driving. Yeah, well, I'm taller. Get in the truck. <laughs> All right. What's wrong, Peter, Devin? You give me those keys right now, young man. Shut up. Hey, uh, it's Joe. Hey. Uh, look, I, I didn't need to get out of here. Any chance you could help me out with that? Actually, that sounds really good. No, really. I, that'd, be, that'd be great. No, I, I, I get it. I get it. I do. I'll, I'll just be ready whenever, okay? Thank you. We just keep getting bigger and bigger, don't we? Pretty soon we're gonna need a name for this band. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Art. Hey, man. Looks like Steve brought a new guy. Steve, good to see you, buddy. Hey, Ben Cooper, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> okay, so you know how you're always talking about being a good neighbor? Yeah. What about the Neighborhood Project? 
How about the neighborhood rehab project? <laughs> Joe, it's good to see you, brother. I've heard you're real handy with fixing stuff, too. Glad to have the help. I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> Great. All right. We're wasting daylight. Let's get to work. show you something. Oh, Russ. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you said something the other day that gave me an idea. Okay. You said God uses us like instruments. Well, I'm a tool. I'm a tool. Huh? <laughs> I like it. Petition signed. Why not? Because they've already donated to the project. And Mike's crew, can you guys raise your hands? Great. All right. You're going to be over at the Burgess place working on her front porch area. Uh, it's on the north side of town, but we're going to have trucks running back and forth with supplies if you need anything. Any questions? Great. Here we go. On three. One, two, three. I'm the school! Ben? Yeah. You sure you want me to do this? Hey, Joe, you're ready. I mean, you can handle the work, right? Oh, the work ain't the problem. It's, it's the team. What do you mean? I don't know how to lead nobody. <laughs> Joe, uh, leadership isn't telling people what to do. It, it's just inspiring them to do what they already do well. You've been here every Saturday for the past two months. And I've heard about your service at the program group home. You know, it's one of the reasons I was glad they let you work release with us. Joe, you're not that guy anymore. It's time to go be the better guy. So what do 
Uh, Dan? Hey, Joe. So glad you're here. We don't even know where to start. Well, we I was I was thinking that we'd start with those weeds down there, and then we'll just work our way back. If that sounds yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's do it. Lead on. Show us how. Oh, hey, Greg. I didn't think you were going to be able to stop by today. Ben came to bring you this. What's this? It's an official letter from the city. It says they had to investigate some complaints and a uh, petition that's been going around some of the neighborhoods. Ben, they may have to shut you down. They have to investigate our permits. <laughs> Greg, you know we got all the right stuff. Can they really do this? They already did. I thought the city was on board with what we're doing here. They were. They... It, the city loves this project. You know that, Ben. But they still have to investigate these complaints, and they've got to give that petition its due process. Ben, it's not about the city. It, it's about... The IRA and the GTS. Yeah. All right. What can we do? At this point, not much. They'd have to stop that complaint, and they'd have to uh, cease with that petition. We both know that that's not going to happen. What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to Art's place to get some paint. I'm going to paint that fence right there. Then? I'm going to go home and pray about this with my wife. What's got you in here? I don't know. I, I just I, I can't seem to wrap my mind around you know, why people are the way they are. Wow, that's that's a pretty deep thought. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I've been working with this ministry delivering bread and uh, been going to this apartment complex for months and, and finally seeing some signs that things are turning around. That's great. Well, today the apartment manager comes to me and just tears into me. For what? For bringing the bread every week. He said, uh, he said it was trespassing and next time he's gonna call the cops. So, what's got you in here? I don't know, I, I guess I just thought that maybe he'd give me an answer in here. You know, Ben, learned the truth a long time ago that despite all our efforts to try and love others and try to do the right thing, the reality is everyone's been given the right to choose. Unfortunately, some choose not to see. But, I mean, what does that even mean, though? It means that even though you're doing great things with the bread and those people down there are starting to make changes, even though you're making a difference, he's chosen not to see it. I mean, why? Could be anything, but I found that most times it's, they just can't get past their own hurt. So, I mean, I, I need to find out what his hurt is and, and help him there? And that, Ben, is the second biggest truth I've learned. Sometimes they don't want your help. How am I supposed to know the difference? You don't. You just keep on loving them and keep on working until they either tell you to stop or they let you in.
are you doing under there? I fix shoes, I don't bake bread. Get out of there, you bum! Hey, back up. Sir, I need you to come out from behind there. Bruno, Bruno, let me talk to him. Just, just give me a minute, all right? Hey, how you doing? It's Joe. Look, man, uh, you're gonna wanna come out of there, okay? Look, man, I've been where you're at, you know that. I know what it's like to be hungry. Yeah, I used to wait up back of the diner just hoping for some scraps, you know? It's tough, man, ain't it? Walking around, thinking that everybody hates you. Yeah, and sooner or later you start thinking, well, well, maybe they're right. Maybe I ain't worth nothing. But these guys, they ain't like that. Had to deal with me, what? At least once a week, huh? <laughs> they're just doing their job. You know, protecting people, keeping the peace. And I was just making it worse for myself. And so are you, all right? Look, man, you need to come out here, okay? Not because they're gonna make you. Believe me, that's gonna suck. <laughs> but, because it ain't too late to change things. It ain't too late to, to turn things around and make it better. Look at me. God knows if I can do it, anybody can. Why don't you just come on out? All right there, buddy? There you go. Thanks, Joe. I'm just glad it's not me this time, huh? You're good. Real good. Thanks. Hey, you got this? Yeah, I'm good. Joe! Hey, where are you heading? I'm off to the group home. It's great. Hey, tell you what. Wait a second. I have Officer Clay take the transport unit. I'll give you a ride. <sighs> no, Joe. It's in the front seat. Hey, Ben. Hey, Greg. They have some pretty good coffee here, don't they? They do. Hi, hey, Julie. How are Officer you? Knox, how are you? I'm great, thanks. Good. What can I get you this fine morning? Uh, how about another cup? Okay. See anything good out there? How about some pancakes? Sounds good. Pancakes and a cup of coffee? Would you like a warm-up? Yes, ma'am. Sounds good. Thanks. So, what's up? Well... I know what I'm going to do. About the letter? Yep. What's that? I'm going to the next Connected Neighbors meeting. Confront the problem there. Whoa, that's, uh, that's pretty bold. I've talked with Marie and Russ about it. I talked with Joe. I, I, I've prayed about it a lot. These people are ready for this. Greg, there's a real sense of community for the first time in a long time around here. We just have one last obstacle to overcome. The Golden Trader Society. The Golden Trader Society. Here's your coffee, Officer Knox. Thank you. Ready for a refill? Sure. Is there anything else I can get you? Good, thanks. Ben, I'm with you. What do we need to do? Thanks. Here's what I'm thinking. Warren? More reports for the meeting tonight? Yes, I have some information on Golden Peaks. Why? Well, I think you're going to need it. 
Why? Because I think the whole town's in there, Ira, including yeah. Ben Cooper and, um... Well? And Joe Devon. Folks, let's get this meeting started. Well, it looks like a full house tonight, and I can only imagine it has something to do with the first name on the docket. So, uh, Pastor Ben, the floor is yours. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, thirty two, twenty nine, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, forty nine, forty one, forty two. Those aren't just numbers anymore. Those are addresses of homes at Golden Peaks Mobile Home Park. You, you've all heard the saying that the difference between a house and a home is love. I've got a deeper understanding for that now more than ever before. When I sat down with Russ, the manager of the park, I didn't know this community was capable of such love. That individuals could set aside their status or position in society to love a 20 by 90 trailer into a cherished home. Only a group of people willing to put others first could start a movement that's poured out of Golden Peaks and carried to other parks and locations around the city. Other buildings turned into homes. The transformation of buildings has been impressive, but not as big as the transformation of us as people. For one day, there's no rich, no poor, just people. For one day, we choose to put others first. We choose to live the golden rule. Now, I know that there are some of you who are hesitant to explore a new way of doing things. That fear of losing the past has uh, crippled you from moving forward. I'm here to show you today that golden does have a rich past, but it doesn't have to disappear in its future. I've asked a few folks to come today to share their story with us. But Pastor Ben, we're on a tight schedule. There's not room for story time. Let him, let him go, Ira. Thank you, Warren. I'd like to have uh, Russ share a few words and uh, then a couple homeowners from the park. Russ? <clears throat> Hello. I, I, uh, like Ben said, my name's Russ McKay. I'm the uh, manager over at Golden Peaks. Uh, I've been going on 20 years now. Uh, when Ben asked me to share, I uh, gotta be honest, I was thinking, no way. I mean, the thought of speaking in public, I mean, <clears throat> well, then I thought about what all Ben's done and all the volunteers, and there was no way I could stay silent. So here I am. I won't be long, I promise. I was at the point of hopelessness when I went and asked Ben for help. You see, I, I usually do all the maintenance myself around the park, and well, with the, with the trailers getting older and, and Russ getting older, and and the cost of living and renovations going up, well, that, that put the tenants and, and me in, a, in quite a pickle. And uh, then I got this letter from the city with a list, a long list of violations that needed to be repaired. And 
It was a long list that could lead to the closing of the park if we didn't address them. Well, I asked the city for some help, and they said they'd do their best, but, uh, you know, these things take time. So, meantime, I'm still responsible with all these violations, and uh, it's a tough load. Fast forward to today, and we've got 10 things left on the list to do. And just found out this morning that we have an approval to extend the deadline. <sighs> you know, this all happened because people like Ben and all these folks around the room caring about their neighbors. I've always said being poor isn't a matter of the wallet. It's a matter of the heart. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, up next, uh, I'd like to invite the Browns. Hi, I'm David and this is my wife, Elise. We don't have much to say, except thank you. Thank you for all the people who came to our house and not only worked on our home, but took the time to get to know us. It all started when David lost his job. Art Wallace, he was doing our plumbing at the time, and one day I just, I broke down. I told him our situation, and he just listened. And then one Monday morning, I got a call from him saying that a, a shop was looking to hire someone for the back. And I was so happy. That's it. I'm just glad that we live in a place where neighbors help neighbors. Thank you. Lastly, uh, I'd like to give the floor to Greg Knox, a man who served this community for over 25 years. Greg. Thank you, Ben. You know, I thought a lot, thought a lot about what I wanted to say today, what I should say today. But in all honesty, I could only, uh, could only think of one story. One story that sums up what this is all about, what this neighborhood rehab project is all about. It's a story about a man. A man who lost everything and everyone that he loved or he cared about. Man who lived on the streets or in some kind of rundown housing all his life. A man because of the pain and the circumstances in his life. He turned to drinking a bottle of vodka a day. And through all of that, he fought back. He fought back and battled his alcoholism. He even became a mentor to others. And he was such an influence at the rehab clinic. They named a, uh, an award after him, a mentoring award. It's called the Devon Award. You know, I know, I, I know Joe would normally, he wouldn't want me 
up here talking about him. And he sure wouldn't want to be up here having the talk. But when I asked him if it would be all right, he said to me, if it causes others to get on board, if it helps just one person to change, then he, he was all for it. Ben, I, uh, I know you wanted me to talk about my service, my time on the force. I, uh, I just think this might be a good time to hear from Joe, if that's okay with you. Joe? One of the things they teach you in uh, alcohol counseling is is the power of forgiveness. I'm here to apologize. Whenever I drank, it's like all the the pain and the hurt went away, but. All that left was the anger. So I want to apologize to all the people who, who tried to help me, but I wouldn't listen. I want to apologize to all the people I hurt. All the people me and Johnny hurt. I want to apologize to the whole city for having to put up with me all the time. <laughs> Ira, sir, I want to apologize to you. When Johnny died, I lost the last member of my family and the only one that cared for me. I feel the hole in my broken heart with, with booze, and disdain for everyone else, because if they were hateable, well, that, that made us equal. <sighs> Sir, I'm the reason he was driving that night. I'm the reason he took his eyes off the road in that one moment. I wish I could go back. Change things. Maybe he'd still be here. I wish I didn't have to live with the memory of that night. But I do. And so do you. So do you. I'm sorry you were robbed of that innocent little girl because of me. You have every right to be angry at me. But what me and Johnny did as wrong as it was doesn't mean that these people should have to suffer just, just because they're poor or homeless. Please, don't take your anger at me, not on them. Thank you. There's recently been some serious complaints filed with the city and uh, even a petition started about what we're trying to do. My hope tonight is to plead with whoever filed those complaints or signed that petition to reconsider. 
The deadline to cease is tomorrow, which happens to be a Saturday. And if I or anyone else show up, we could be facing some serious consequences. I hope that the words of the people who spoke tonight have opened your eyes and allowed you to see that the spirit of great organizations like the Golden Trader Society, which sought true community, live on in the Neighborhood Rehab Project. I appreciate you letting us crash your meeting tonight. If anybody would like to help, I'll be at the Golden Peaks Mobile Home Park, 8 a.m. sharp, tool belt in hand. Thank you. Man, Marie, it is crazy. I got back to the office today. I had to have at least 20 voicemails from officers who wanted to come help out, and I've got more coming on the way. This is amazing, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thanks. <laughs> Guys, it just means so much to us that y'all are here today. Really appreciate you showing up. Ben, Greg, Joe. Joe, last night you opened up a wound I spent years trying to close. I hated you every minute of every day from that night on. You and your brother took my granddaughter from me. I allowed my anger towards you and your brother to spill over on to anybody that was close to being like you in any way. I still remember that morning I dropped her off at school. 
I think about it all the time. Do you know what she was staying late to do? Help serve dinner to some elderly folk. I became bitter. And I started to stand for all the things that my father worked so hard to fight against. I'm afraid my father would not be very happy with me so far. Joe, I'm sorry. I allowed my anger to turn into prejudice. But I do want to live up to my father and my granddaughter's example. I do. So, Pastor Ben, On behalf of the Golden Trader Society and myself, uh, as of right now, all the complaints have been dropped. I do have one question. What's that? Can I borrow a hammer? <laughs> Joe, it's not about you or anybody else doing it the way I do. You know, it, it doesn't matter what your thing is, whether it's fixing houses with the neighborhood rehab project or running a food bank out of your house. All that matters is being a good neighbor. I want to do more, that's for sure. I just feel like I have so much to give, you know? Good. We got a lot to do. Let's get the work done.
שבכל הלילות עד אוכלים בתומסה On this night, throughout the world, millions of Jewish people sit down together around the table and ask the question, why is this night different from all other nights? It is on this night when a feast, a meal of freedom is shared, commemorating an event that took place 3,500 years earlier. It is on this night that the Passover is celebrated. The holiday of Passover recalls the liberation of the children of Israel from 400 grueling years of Egyptian bondage. The exodus when Moses led more than 600,000 Hebrew slaves with their meager possessions out from a land of idolatry into the wilderness of Sinai. In Jerusalem, 1,500 years after the Exodus, Jesus too celebrated the Passover. For Jesus, this occasion was no ordinary affair. He had greatly desired to partake of this meal with his disciples. The drama that took place the night of the Passover while sharing the bread and wine was a crucial turning point in world history. Jesus spoke that night in metaphors, using symbols which were later to become the hallmark of the Christian faith. Portrayed on countless paintings and other art forms throughout the world, this unique Passover meal has become better known as the Last Supper. The story of the Last Supper takes place in the springtime of the year 30 in the first century, a time when the Holy Land thaws from the cold gray of winter, when riverbeds flow once again with the rains of the wintry season, restoring life to the land, a time when the flora burst forth in spectacular fashion, announcing nature's renaissance. In the air, birds too are a testimony that spring has indeed arrived, returning once again to build their nests. Deer can be seen everywhere, proudly showing off the new arrivals to their families. All of creation is moving in perfect harmony, displaying signs of renewal like the blossoms of the almond tree, announcing a true celebration. The Jewish people also have their rites of spring, the Passover. One month before the feast, Preparations are being made throughout the land. The collecting of the necessary supplies, the selecting from the finest of their herds for the Passover sacrifice, organizing themselves for the long journey up to Jerusalem. Passover is one of three Jewish holidays during the calendar year, which commands a Jewish person to make a pilgrimage to the holy city. 
hundreds of thousands go up to Jerusalem to join their extended families and celebrate the Exodus together. During the Passover in the year 30 CE, Provincial Jerusalem was transformed into an international city of different languages and dialects. Its population increased tenfold to over 350,000 for the eight-day affair. The added presence strained municipal resources and services. Limited housing already stretched to its limits forced the pilgrims to sleep in tents or find homeowners willing to extend hospitality. The walls of Jerusalem barely contained the influx of so many visitors. The added stress within the dimensions of the city created a potential for subversion within occupied Judea. The Roman authorities increased their presence, adding more security and tension to a potential powder keg. The regular garrison at the Antonia Fortress overlooking the city was supplemented with troops mainly from the Roman capital in Caesarea. Like many other pilgrims, Jesus and his disciples also made their way to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. The journey on foot from Galilee took five to six days. They traveled familiar terrain down through the warmth of the Jordan Valley, staying overnight at villages or camping in olive groves under the starry skies. In faith, they took little with them, trusting that divine providence would accommodate their every need. As they traveled, more and more people were drawn to hear and follow the teachings of Jesus. He spoke words of love and faith, appealing to the people of the land. Attracted by his concepts of compassion and hope, the crowds grew larger. It was in this little town of Bethany, five miles outside Jerusalem, that Jesus performed his greatest miracle by raising Lazarus from the dead. When he rode a colt down from the Mount of Olives into the city, he was greeted as a king. A large crowd who had come to the feast went out to meet the man of whom so much had been spoken, crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The euphoria experienced during their welcome to the holy city gave the disciples the impression that a joyful Passover was ahead of them. But in the days that followed, the disciples were to become witnesses to a new stage in their master's life. The dividing wall had now gone up between Jesus and the religious establishment. The high priest, Caiaphas, was facing a serious dilemma. Jesus had raised much commotion, and Caiaphas knew that any more disorder would give Rome the excuse it needed to put an end to religious freedom in Judea. For Caiaphas, Jesus had literally become a wanted fugitive.
The disciples had followed Jesus' every move for the past three years. At times, they had seen Jesus relaxing, praising God for all that he had done. At other times, they had witnessed his distress, saddened by the realities of the times. Thursday morning, only hours before the start of the Passover. Across the Kidron Valley, outside from the hustle and bustle of the city, Jesus prophesied of the things to come. The disciples listened to his every word as he spoke about the future of Jerusalem and the end of the age. On the Mount of Olives, they walked down to the Garden of Gethsemane, a place favored by Jesus. The word Gethsemane is derived from the Hebrew word gachmonim, which means oil press. Gethsemane was known for the purity of the rich olive oil it produced. They needed to make arrangements for the evening's Passover meal. Much had to be done and time was running short. They had not even discussed where they were going to partake of the Seder meal. They waited for Jesus to provide the answers. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. And they said to him, where do you want us to prepare it? And he said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house that he enters. And you shall say to the owner of the house, the teacher says to you, where is the guest room in which I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large furnished upper room Prepare it there. It was now the 14th day in the month of Nisan, the same exact day 1,500 years earlier on which God brought the Israelites out of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. God's indignation toward the Egyptians was unyielding. He saw the bitter oppression that the taskmasters forced on the children of Israel. He heard the wailing from Israelite mothers as the Egyptians drowned their baby boys in the Nile River. He sent Moses to demand of Pharaoh to release his people, but Pharaoh refused, claiming that I know not the Lord. The hand of God was swift as he devastated Egypt with 10 different plagues, locusts, hail, Frogs and darkness engulfed the land. God had given warning ten times to Pharaoh to heed his voice. Pharaoh had refused. The River Nile, 
Egypt's lifeline, provided for Egypt's very existence. 95% of the population was heavily concentrated along its banks. The first plague turned this river to blood. Reference to the blood would be alluded to again. It was with the tenth and most horrible plague that the blood of the lamb would be used to save the children of Israel from the angel of death. And the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you. God's deliverance of the Israelites was the greatest turning point in the history of the Jewish people. The Exodus marked not only the passage from slavery to freedom, but also the emergence of the nation of Israel and the foundation of the covenant between God and his people. After 40 years of wandering in the Sinai, the children of Israel became heir to the Promised Land, a time when 12 nomadic tribes spread throughout the countryside learned to become farmers and work the soil. With the sweat of their brow, they would cultivate the fertile hills and valleys. The desert would bloom as the fields would yield a bounty of produce in return for their toil. Peter and John descended the Mount of Olives, making their way toward the holy city. Despite the early hour of the morning, the sounds that rang out from the city reflected the activity of people engaged in the final Passover preparations. Shortly after entering the city, they found the man they were searching for. The water he collected was probably used for the traditional unleavened bread, matzot. Adding water from a pure source when mixing the dough was considered a religious deed in the handsomest of ways. After realizing that the master had sent the two disciples to look for him, the invitation was extended. He escorted Peter and John to the house where the upper room was located, fulfilling what Jesus had told him. In the ritual of the Passover, leaven was strictly forbidden. Everything of leaven, food made with yeast, had to be removed and burned. A thorough search needed to be performed in storage areas, rugs, garments, or any place that the smallest crumb might have been concealed. Everyone would be engaged in the cleaning process. 
Leaven, according to rabbinical sources, represents sin, that which prevents us from doing the will of God. Peter and John followed their host to the house. It was customary to extend hospitality to strangers in Jerusalem during the Passover period. The extra burden of preparing the Passover feast for Jesus and the Twelve was a weighty assignment, but the hosting family most probably felt honored to have Jesus and his disciples within their home. It was the noon hour, and gathering outside the walls of the Holy Temple were herds of sheep and goats. Throughout Jerusalem, special earthen ovens were being prepared in the backyards for the roasting of the Paschal sacrifices. A thin veil of smoke enveloped the streets and neighborhoods, adding to the holiday atmosphere. Provide the special flour needed to make matzot, selected grain fields were set aside. This tradition can be traced back to the Israelites' exodus from Egypt. Their hurried departure did not give time enough for the dough to rise. And so unleavened bread is eaten during the Passover. This is how the ancient way of making unleavened bread may have looked. After mixing the flour and water together and kneading the dough several times, it was rolled out flat and quickly placed on a hot surface. Moments later, the dough was turned on its other side. Within minutes, it was ready to eat. Much had to be done, and time was running short. The rabbis in Jesus' time decreed that every Jewish person must participate in the feast. Those who could afford to donated money, fruits, vegetables, and grains. Thirty days prior to Passover, all of the necessary foodstuffs for the meal had been collected and stored for the poor. Today in Israel, as in Jesus' day, Passover is a time when everyone is caught up in the fervor of holiday preparations. This meal, also known as the Seder, which is the Hebrew word for order, is considered a meal fit for a king. 
Farmers bring their first harvest into the markets and kitchens are working at their full capacity. Cooking for the additional 13 guests, with just a few hours left, must have been a real challenge. Today, we wouldn't think twice about common table salt. However, in the time that Jesus lived, salt was a rare and precious commodity said to be literally worth its weight in gold. Fortunately, the Dead Sea was close by, providing affordable salt that was to make the Jerusalem cuisine known for its superior taste. Since no bread was permitted, rice became a major part of the diet during the eight days of Passover. Rice was introduced to the area during the Second Temple period by Alexander the Great. The grain was cultivated in the fertile Hula Valley in the northern part of the Galilee. The right mixture of rainfall and the area's rich soil provided the region with a strong source of income. The Bible mentions the grapevine 16 times, perhaps highlighting the importance of its fruit. The leaves can also be eaten. In fact, one of the most ancient Middle Eastern dishes is stuffed grape leaves. Rabbinical commentary describes Jerusalem cuisine as one that made use of a large variety of spices, especially when cooking vegetables. The spices are referred to as food improvers causing even the simplest of dishes to taste good. The Judean hillside, a desolate mountainous region standing some 3,000 feet above sea level, was transformed into a viable agricultural area. This is reflected in names like the Mount of Olives or Bethlehem, which means house of bread. When the Israelites began to cultivate the land, they were blessed with a bountiful display of native agricultural products. One of the Israelites' greatest innovations was terracing. Retaining walls held onto the precious rainwater for agricultural purposes. In them, vegetation flourished. Spices such as mint, rosemary, and mustard all benefited from this painstaking labor. Terracing prevented soil erosion and added beauty to the countryside. Some of the plants that made their way into the kitchens were not only used as flavorings, but also had medicinal and religious applications. Every detail was essential in order to make each part of the meal appealing to both eye and palate. 
figs and dates, two of the most important fruits of the country, were commonly used for dessert. The women utilized the best of their culinary gifts. They also took pride in their work. The dried fruits were carefully sliced open and stuffed with a variety of nuts and marzipan. An array of tasty food with main courses and side dishes, mixed beans, cooked olives, stuffed vegetables, rice and lentils were just part of the menu. Ceremonial plates, too, like the charoset, made from a mixture of nuts, raisins, and apples, were prepared. By the early afternoon, the table would be set for the Passover, awaiting Jesus and his disciples. This is Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, a legendary city that has a strong hold over our imaginations. This is a place where emotion and history intertwine. Some 2,000 years ago, on this site, at the heart of the city, King Herod rebuilt the Great Temple, a massive building project covering an area of more than 26 acres. It was considered a feat of monumental proportions. Today, all that remains of its magnificence are the stones of the outer western wall. It is Judaism's holiest site, a place of pilgrimage and worship, of joy and lamentation. Its melody echoes across the ages. The sad memory of its destruction has been engraved in the hearts and minds of the Jewish people. Traditional signs of mourning are evident, such as leaving an unpainted spot next to a window or on a wall outside the house, and in daily prayers asking God to rebuild the temple. The Orthodox tie a black thread to their clothes in remembrance of its tragic loss. Even in weddings, an oath is taken. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, may my right hand forget her skill. Since the last century, the character of Jerusalem has taken a dramatic change. A great influx of Jewish people started arriving from the four corners of the earth, bringing with them their distinctive habits, languages, and traditions. Jerusalem is home to the three great monotheistic religions. Judaism, for whom the centrality of the holy city is paramount. Muslims worship at the Dome of the Rock, from which Muhammad is said to have ascended to heaven. Christians revere this city in which Jesus was crucified. Outside of Jerusalem's eastern wall, the animal market still exists. As in the days of Jesus, it plays an important social role.
It is a place of vibrant commerce, of haggling and bargaining. It is where the attributes of the animals are scrutinized for any imperfections. In the same manner, Peter and John would have purchased their Paschal lamb. Trade would have been brisk during the last day of preparation for the Passover. In adherence to the principles of Moses, only a year old lamb without blemish would fit. As the demand would have exceeded the supply available, the price for the animal may have been higher than usual. Within three days, more than 30,000 lamb were to be sold. After purchasing their lamb, the two disciples made their way through the crowded streets and headed toward the temple to offer up the paschal sacrifice before God. We can picture what this sacrifice must have been like by observing the Passover rituals on Mount Gerizim, which are now performed by the Samaritans in Israel. For 2,500 years, the Samaritans have continued the traditions written in the five books of Moses. Here, the ancient ritual of blood sacrifice declaring that all life belongs to God is carried out to this day. More than 60 sheep will be slaughtered before the day is over. The animals are first skinned, and then the hearts and lungs are removed and cooked separately. Fires have been prepared in ovens in the same way they were prepared two millennia ago in Jerusalem. Each sacrifice is carefully placed on large honed skewers in order not to break any of the animal's bones, a regulation stipulated in the Torah. The priest gives the signal and the lambs are plunged into the fiery pits. A metal grate is placed on top to hold the skewers in position. In order to prevent the meat from turning to gristle, wet blankets are thrown over the top to smother the fire. Thick, wet mud is placed on top, cutting off the oxygen supply and sealing in the juices of the lamb. In Jesus' day, the great temple was the only place where all the paschal sacrifices were held. Before entering the temple grounds, every person would have to purify themselves in a ritual bath called a mikveh. A forerunner to baptism, this symbolic washing was considered to spiritually cleanse the individual. More than 70 ritual baths have been uncovered next to the southern wall of the old city. After the water immersion, these steps were climbed, leading through the arches 
and onto holy ground. The blast from the trumpets of the Temple Mount announced the opening of the great holiday. Making their way together toward the upper room, the disciples sensed the evening awaiting them would somehow be different, but they didn't know why. Jesus, though, knew what his fate was to be. He tried in the past explaining to the disciples, his friends, but to no avail. Jesus would have to play out his destiny alone. The aroma from the food filled the air. Both the upper room and the meal of freedom awaited the 13 expectant guests. In Jesus' day, a person's status was measured by where he was seated at the table. Before the Seder began, there seemed to be a dispute amongst the disciples. They probably argued that the closer one sat to Jesus, the greater he was in the eyes of the master. We can assume that John and Peter expected to sit next to Jesus as they were personally asked by him to prepare the Passover. John, a gentle individual and a brilliant thinker, as his gospel clearly demonstrates, obtained one of the expected seats of honor next to the master. But the other seat next to Jesus seemingly went to the only Judean of the group, Judas Iscariot. Simon Peter was deeply hurt. The disciples were a group of 12 very different individuals who stayed together for three years. Controversy and disagreements were bound to occur from time to time. It was at this juncture that Jesus was determined to teach the principle of humility. He decided to wash the feet of his disciples, a task one would normally delegate to a servant. Approaching Peter, we realize how upset Peter was. Peter said to him, Never shall you wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus not only taught humility, but he did so with great compassion. He was able to make Peter understand, and in so doing, succeeded in calming the air. Throughout the ages, the Jewish people have maintained the same traditional order as they would have done in Jesus' day. The washing of hands during the Seder is followed by a benediction. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with thy commandments and enjoyed on us the cleansing of the hands. On this night, hope for man's redemption is earnestly expressed. It is believed that Elijah the prophet may enter during the Seder meal, announcing the arrival of the Messiah. 
So in addition to four cups of wine, which the Seder calls for, a special cup is set aside for him. After the wine, the cover over the matzot is lifted and a blessing follows, beginning with the words, this is the bread of affliction which our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let anyone who is needy come and celebrate. Of the three matzot raised, the middle one is broken, with one part wrapped and placed aside. It is called the afikomen and will later be shared by all the participants of the Seder. Now comes the reading of the Haggadah, which unfolds the chronicle of the children of Israel, relating from the time of the Exodus to the building of the temple. The story is told with songs and hymns, emphasized by the tasting of bitter herbs when speaking about the bitter life in Egypt, or drinking wine when glorifying the Lord. It is believed that Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Seder on Mount Zion. A large church, the Dormition Abbey, stands right opposite the building believed to be that of the upper room. The site today attracts many visitors and pilgrims, but only few of them know that this spot is located adjacent to the tomb of King David. Though some scholars will dispute this supposition, the place has a long history. It served as a messianic synagogue during the second and third century and was later renovated by the Crusaders If this is in fact the authentic location, then looking at it, we can presume that Jesus and his disciples were seated right here. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Jesus opened with a festive holiday blessing called the Kiddush over the first cup of wine. Then Jesus passed it on to each of his disciples, beginning with John, who was seated on his right hand side. This was red wine, a reminder of the blood of the lamb that saved the children of Israel in Egypt. As they were drinking the wine, they silently recited the blessing for thou hast lovingly granted us, O Lord our God, this day of the Feast of Matzot, the time of our freedom. Sharing the wine was followed by the blessing over the unleavened bread. Jesus raised the matzot and praised God for bringing forth bread from the earth and for the joy of eating the matzah. Next came the bitter herbs, the second cup of wine, and the cup set aside for Elijah. And finally, the time had arrived for the delicious meal. The paschal lamb prepared by John and Peter was brought in. This was a joyful hour of eating and drinking, chatting and laughing. As they were eating, they spoke about the liberation of the children of Israel and the joy of being free. They knew that the more one tells of the departure from Egypt, the more one merits praise. On the table was the full spread of plenty. Indeed, this was a meal appealing to both eye and palate, a banquet fit for a king, and on that night everyone felt like royalty.
Yet, the mood suddenly changed. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, that one of you will betray me. And being deeply grieved, they each one began to say to him, Surely not I, Lord. And he answered and said, He who dipped his hand with me in the bowl is the one who will betray me. And Judas, who was betraying him, answered and said, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He said to him, You have said it yourself. After Judas left the room, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and divide it among yourselves. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I shall never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Jesus raised the matzot, and he said to them, This is my body. That night, possessed by his destiny and greed, Judas made his way to Caiaphas. He knew that the high priest would still be awake, celebrating the Seder meal. Why have you come at this hour of the night? It has to do with Jesus. I have something to tell you. Yes, 
On that Passover night, the seeds of a new religion were planted. Bread and wine became fundamental components of the Christian faith. But beyond the religious implications, this powerful story intrigued the imagination of artists who were drawn to investigate their version of the hidden drama in this Passover meal. The Last Supper has now superseded the Exodus from Egypt, yet there is a direct correlation between the two events. It is the blood of the Lamb that was used to save and deliver the children of Israel. Today, Christianity and Judaism have much in common. They are both nourished from the same roots, and both the Passover and the Eucharist are linked firmly to the ancient history of the Jewish nation. The discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls shed some light on the origins of the Eucharist. The writers of these manuscripts who have vanished into the pages of history tell of the idea of unity and communal meals. These concepts and values of sharing communion are very similar to the ceremony of the Eucharist. Today in Jerusalem, the streets echo with chants of days gone past. Inside the walls of this timeless city exist a mosaic of cultures, religions, and images. Pilgrims continue to arrive in quest of spiritual discovery. Little remains today of the Jerusalem that Jesus knew, but once a year, that same fever of the Passover preparations fill the air. It is then that the sounds and the smells and the tastes all serve as a constant reminder of the one who had shared his last meal in the company of his loving pupils. I got Mike. But you always pick Mike. Oh, yeah. This is a tough choice. Evan, get over here. Come on, there's no way I'm taking care of the squirt. We'll get crushed. But you can't play five on five with only four players. What about that new kid? Guy comes friend. Guess. Hey, new guy. New guy. Wanna play some ball? Sure. So, who's team of mine? Nobody. You're gonna take Robbie over me? He just moved here. He's never played basketball one day in his life. What are you even doing here, water boy? Come on, Rick. Let's play. Let's go. Yeah. Cool and click, they kike in the body's time. Fakes a pass. It's hard drive the net. He's up, and it's good. Two points for the US Olympic team. Crowd goes wild. Yeah, Kiki does hot tonight. Hey, Robbie, for a new kid, you're pretty stupid. Why are you hanging out with that guy? Don't you know his brother Billy's a retard? So? So just look at him. Seems to me that Kurt's just as much a retard as his big brother Billy is. Shut up, just shut up. Make me. Ugh. Dude, you just got beat up by Kurt the Squirt. Shut up, Evan. 
Squirt, you're done, man. Get outside. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> Robbie, did you know Kurt had an older brother? You can say it. The retarded one. Well... Billy lived with us until a couple months ago. He started wandering into the street, causing public disturbances. So... we had to put him in a home. Kurt. There's just no other way to say this. Billy. Billy died this morning. see you cry. She's suffered enough already. If you boys could go upstairs and play quietly for a while, it would be a very big help. Yes, sir. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Let us pray. For as much as the spirit of the departed has entered into the life immortal, we therefore commit his body to its resting place. But his spirit we commend to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace.
There you have it, Bob. The Americans have won yet another gold medal for their Olympic basketball team. This is the third consecutive year they've won. I'm going to be there one day. Be where? What are you talking about? The Olympics. I'm going to be in the Olympics. <laughs> Get real. Have you looked in the mirror lately? Last I checked, Midget tossing wasn't an Olympic sport. <laughs> I'm gonna get you squirt. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! How can you boys be laughing on a night like tonight? Your brother is dead, Kurt. And you and your little friend here are acting like nothing had ever happened. You make me sick! Mom. Get away from me. Just get away! It's been a long day for everyone. Boys, you can camp out, but I suggest you turn in early. Come to bed, Marcy. Just forget what your mom said. We all need to be men about this. I expect your behavior will be much improved by tomorrow morning. Good night, boys. Hey, Kurt. Yeah? Is... Is your mom okay? Don't worry about it. I've never seen her like that. I'm sure everything will be okay in the morning. Thanks for coming. Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye. Mr. Ambassador, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Nice meeting you. Congressman, thanks for coming. Wait, wait, there's someone I want you to meet. Kurt, come here a second. The future of American basketball. So here's the basketball star. Congratulations, son. Thank you, sir. You know, if you've got half the tenacity your father shows on Capitol Hill, I'm sure you're going to be a big success at the university. Yes, sir. I'm going to do my best. Maybe even play in the Olympics one day. Right, son? <laughs> oh, oh. oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. Please, please. Pardon my wife, Congressman. Good night. And don't worry about it. Uh, Miss Maury? Yes, sir. Would you see the Congressman out, please? For nothing drunk. How dare you? How dare you? I only do this because I'm married to a selfish, cold-hearted jerk like you! Not this again. Don't even say it. You're pathetic. It's your fault we're stuck here in this awful place instead of back home in California. We've been over this a thousand times, Marcy. You knew we'd always move to D.C. once I made partner. 
It's a job on the hill. There's nothing pathetic about that. Stop it. Not tonight. Ugh. So you think you're so far above us all, do you, Kurt? Well, you're no better than your father. In fact, you're around even less than he is. At least he's finally making money. All you do is play a stupid game all day! I don't have to take this crap. Are you just gonna let him walk out like that? Some kind of man you are. She's getting worse, you know. Would it kill you to be around a little more? Look who's talking. You're the only son she has left. You don't think I know that? Just make her proud, okay? It'll make things a lot easier for the both of us. Over here, guys. All right, that's it for this season, boys. We had this game right in our hands, but you lost concentration for one split second, and it cost us the playoffs. Hit the showers. I'll see you in a few minutes. Hey, Cockendall. Son, I want to see you tomorrow morning in my office. Give it go, give it go, give it go. Dave, Chase. Dad? You're still here. Glad you can make it. I know I have been working a lot, son, and I'm sorry for that. I just didn't want to miss your last game. I just, I can't believe we lost that game. I mean, we were so close the whole time. If Jerry had made that shot, I don't want to think about it. Now, you know I don't know much about sports, and I'm not one to give advice when it's not asked for, but, uh, well, it seemed to me that Jerry wasn't to blame for missing that shot. You were. You can't be serious. He totally had that shot. I couldn't have set him up better if I wanted to. Again, I know I don't know much about sports, but I do know a little bit about success. I don't think you should have passed that ball off. The shot was yours to take. But Jerry is a much better shot than I am. He's a starter. There is one big difference between the two of you. Jerry takes risks. He fails sometimes, but a lot of times he succeeds. Kurt, if you always pass the ball off to someone else, and what I mean to say is that if you don't shoot, you won't ever score. I gotta go back. Back? Where? To the gym? What for? 
I gotta start shooting. Now, for next season. Big Kurt, what's up? What's up, man? Hey, man. How's it going? Uh, seriously, where have you been? I stayed after the game to train. You know, you really haven't changed a bit since California. What are you talking about? I grew at least an entire foot since then. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've been working out. Oh, I noticed you were looking good. You know what I mean. You're still as obsessed as ever, man. Hey, guys. Hey, I went ahead and ordered you one. The brothers are taking care of everything. Um, no thanks, man. I don't drink. <laughs> Wait, then why are you gonna rush a fraternity? What can I get for you? Uh, I'll just have a water, please. You know what the sad thing is? Some of these guys show up to practice completely hungover, and they still beat me. I don't get it. If you can't beat them, join them, right? Hmm? Here is your water. That'll put hair on the chest. <laughs> Seriously, I can't believe you're actually drinking water. Do you, do you want me to get you a little sippy cup or something? Shut up. Seriously, I don't get it. I mean, I'm working just as hard as ever. But no matter what I do, these guys still take it to me. I'm beginning to think the man upstairs has it out for me. <laughs> you know, maybe he has something better for you than basketball. Yes. Like soccer, it is about time you learn to play a real man's game. A real man's game? Look, soccer is a hobby, okay? It's not a sport. I'm just gonna outwork all those guys. Come on in, son. Have a seat. Kurt, now that the season's over, I wanted to talk to you about our plans for next year. Now, I know that you're a hard worker. In fact, you're the hardest worker I've ever seen. And I know how much you love this game. That's why we gave you a shot in the first place. But sometimes, son, that's not enough. I really don't think you have the ability to play at this level. What? Coach, if this is about last night... It's not about last night. This is a bigger decision. I've thought about this for a long time, and I don't want to make it, but I have to do what's best for this program. Well, whatever it takes for me to improve in the off season, I'm gonna do it, coach. I want to be a part of this team. I don't think you understand me, son. We have a lot of top recruits coming in. We simply don't have room for you here now. Well, is there something I could be working on? What is it, my foul shot, my passing, what? Look. I didn't want to have to put it to you this way. We simply don't need you here now. Uh, yeah, I, I understand. Well, thank you, Coach, for your time and the opportunity. I appreciate it. It's been our pleasure, son. Canvas forever, baby! That's right. Hey, I'm gonna go grab some punch and I'll be right back. You know that's not punch, right? No, slow down a bit, dude. He's not exactly a party, bro. Look, I'm fine, okay? I'm I'm not drunk. Yet. <laughs> Can, can I get you something to drink? 
Right. Um, well, um, my name's Kurt. What's yours? Cherry. Such a pretty name for such a pretty girl. <laughs> no? Okay. I... <laughs> Can I help you, Kukano? Bruce, everything's fine. Just having a conversation here, man. Not looking for any trouble, okay? Let me give you a little piece of advice. Find another girl. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. You two are... Mm, I did not know. I'm sorry, man. Don't Hey, don't hold it against me. Come on, Sharon. You two have a great night. You okay, man? I'm fine. Oh, excuse me. Well done, Kurt. Dude, we should go after him. He's... No, Robbie was fine. Dude, he's drunk. He's he not is fine. fine. He's not fine. Dude, he's fine. I'll see you later. an understatement. Is everything all right? I had my meeting with the coaches today. And? I'm cut. I'm cut. They... They actually cut me. Oh, man. That's heavy. Well, on the bright side... Now that you've got a little free time on your hands, you can come and help out your fellow brothers on the Gamma soccer team this weekend. Well, he just got cut from the team, man. Leave him alone. Guys, come here. Come here, come here, come here. Look, I am not gonna play soccer, okay? There's no way I would ever play a, a boring, lame, girly game like that. Okay. You've had enough fun for one night. Come on. Here I'll take go. you home. Come on, stand up. No, no, I'm good. Come on. I'm Al, give me here. here. All right. Come on, stand up. Bobby, I'm fine. No. Come on. All right, we should just let you drive home. <laughs> it really, really could have been much, much worse. Seriously. Bruce could have punched you right in the mouth. Really, think about that game. Saturday. Girls will be there? Mm, nope. No, no way. I'm not doing it. Uh, soccer is for pansies, man. Okay. okay, let's get you home. Pansies. Hey, Kurt, it won't hurt to give it a try. And you've got to be better at playing soccer than you are picking up chicks. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Okay. Watch your head. There we go. Gosh, let's go through it. <laughs> you are a disaster. <laughs> Watch your feet. Okay. So, what do you want to see me about? Well, Dad, um... I'm not going to be playing ball for the Eagles anymore. What? What are you trying to pull here? No son of mine is going to be a quitter. We paid good money to get you into that school. Dad, it's not like that, OK? They cut me from the team. They did what? Do you need me to call the athletic director? Should I set up a meeting with your coach? No, really, Dad. Look, the coach said I have great work ethic. It's just that they're expanding the program and they're bringing in a lot of top recruits next year. They just don't have a place for me anymore. What about your future? How am I gonna explain this to our friends? What about your mom? 
It's not like I've quit sports forever. And I've got a soccer game this weekend with my fraternity if you want to come. Some of the guys from the team asked me to play. Soccer. For your fraternity. You can do better than that, Kurt. You know what your success means to this family. Yeah, Dad, I know. Look, this soccer stuff is just for fun. I mean, it's a great networking opportunity. And don't worry, I'm gonna keep working on my game. I'll play in intramurals, maybe transfer. I just don't know what else to do. I did my best. If you had truly done your best, we wouldn't be having this conversation now, would we? Miss Maury? Yes, sir? Get Steve for me. We're done here. And tell my wife not to wait up for me. We're gonna have to lean hard if we're gonna get some movement on this bill. Kurt, I want you to come up with a list of five other schools you could transfer into. And we'll go over it this weekend. So, how'd your dad take it? About as well as you would expect. Isn't my spring pledges? It's time for you guys to get dressed for the big show. And uh, Cookie Doll, I'm expecting big things tonight from you guys. Big performance. It's time to go get dressed. Let's go, ladies. Up oh, now. Go. <laughs> Back in everybody's attention. You guys can just come on up, brothers. Please bring your dates up here. We got a special announcement. Come on up, guys. As president of Phi Tau Gamma, it is my distinct privilege and my honor to present this year's beautiful, beautiful pledge queen by, by unanimous decision, absolutely, Miss Sherry Jo Williams. Oh, Sherry, come on up. <laughs> there she is. Give it up for the queen of crown, my lady. Yes. There she is. She's my angel. All right, let's bring the boys out. Here they come. Come on, boys. Loud and proud, babies. More time from the top, just a little louder this time. A little enthusiasm. Alright, you guys enjoy the rest of the evenings. Have a drink, take care. Uh, for some of you though, I think it's best that we keep our diapers on. Yeah. Hilarious. Did you guys really not think that was hilarious? That was so funny. I can't believe this. Seriously, of all the girls? Wait. Sherry? Do you dig her? What? No. No, she's got a boyfriend. Besides, I can get any chick I want. Uh-huh. You are into her. No, I'm not. I'm just saying... Look, can we talk about something else? Okay. How about we talk about you coming and playing soccer with us this weekend? Sherry will be there. Really? Not like that's a big deal or anything. Oh, yeah. Dude, she comes to all the games. 
Plus, it'll be your chance to show what an all-around athlete you are. And uh, if you really want to get back on Sherry's good side, you should come to church with me this Sunday. Church? Really, Robbie? Come on, stop bugging me about that. I already told you, it's just not my thing. Suit yourself. All I'm saying is that even with everything she's got going on, Sherry Jo Williams never misses a Sunday. Come on, man, I can even give you a ride. Look, guys, I appreciate you trying to make me feel better. I do, but I don't need soccer, and I certainly don't need church to help me out, okay? After tonight's performance, you're gonna need something. Look who decided to show up. Hey, Robbie, it's your lucky day. <laughs> up and go, man. All right. Where? <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> nice head, Ben. Now, what's he doing here? And what is he wearing? You said we needed a goalkeeper, not a fashion model. Besides, you're the one who wanted to play on the field instead of in goal. Dude, Bruce, it's a fraternity game. Dad? What are you doing here? I wanted to put my new camera to work. Besides, it's a nice day. The footage I've caught so far is pretty conclusive. Soccer just isn't your game. But at least you're having fun and getting some exercise, right? Actually, Dad, I feel like I'm getting a hang of this. Look, you stay for the second half. Unfortunately, my lunch break is over. But I enjoyed watching you get scored on six times. It was uh, cute. Thanks again for coming. Just let me know when your next pickup basketball game is, and we'll see what this baby can do. Who knows? Maybe we can even send it to some college coaches. It's ridiculous. He doesn't know the first thing about goalkeeping. And now he's starting to embarrass the entire team. I'm just gonna go get my stuff. Bruce, relax. Why don't you step up and score some goals? I'll mark Flip. Who's Flip? <laughs> he's the guy who keeps scoring on you. He's the captain of the Eagles soccer team, so don't take it too hard. Last time we played the Deltas, they beat us 12-0. They're the league champs. But come on, man, if I can play out there, you can. Yeah, who said I couldn't play? That was warm up, all right? You just wait. Just keep your eye on the ball. Come out and challenge them. Be aggressive and let them make the mistakes. You all right? Yeah. yeah. We've got enough fooling around. It's time to show them the old cack and doll magic. <laughs> Whatever you say.
down six to one, boys. Y'all ridiculous. feel like you got shelled that first half, but a second half shut out your first time a goal against this team. Dude, that's unbelievable. Thanks, man. You weren't too shabby yourself. <laughs> yeah. Hey, baby. Thanks for coming to see me play. Hey, Kurt. You did pretty well out there. I was impressed. Thanks. Do you come to games often? Yeah. <laughs> Sherry would uh, never miss a chance to see her man score. Come on, Bruce. You know I don't like when you joke about that kind of stuff. You know, she's the virgin Sherry. Hey, Robbie, am I gonna see you at church tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I wouldn't miss it. In fact, uh, Kurt here uh, might be coming along too with me uh, t to church. Right, Kurt? Uh, um. <coughs> well, oh. You are? Well, that would be so great. Bruce won't ever come. Well, yeah, I, I go to my own church all the time, but yours sounded pretty cool, so I figured I would check it out. <clears throat> well, I can't wait. I will see you tomorrow. Yeah. Sherry has a date with the sexiest man on campus. Come on, baby. What was that, man? I just thought you could use a little help. Yeah? Well, it better be worth it. Dude, come on. You thought soccer was boring, remember? And now you're hooked. Come on, just give it a shot. I'll pick you up at 8.30. In the morning? Well, Sherry does go to the early service, so, uh... Fine. If I go, I'll drive myself, okay? Whatever it takes, man. See you tomorrow. All right. Kurt. Hey, Kurt, you got a minute? Yeah. All right, I know you're gonna think this sounds crazy, but I'm just gonna say it. What do you think about maybe trying out for the school's soccer team this fall? Play for the Eagles? Division I college soccer. Are you insane? I just got rocked this morning. Okay, the first half does not count. Honestly, I've never seen raw talent like that. Flip was pretty impressed, too. When's the season start? Three months? <laughs> Seriously. Just think how cool it could be. I mean, Bruce is lazy, slow, and he thinks he owns this place. I would love to see you take him down a notch. Wait, wait, wait. Bruce is the starting goalkeeper? I thought he played striker. Nah, he just does that for the frat games to get a break from the goal. He was all south last year. Okay, all right, hold on. I can't beat that. I look like an idiot. With your experience in college basketball, and with your crazy work ethic and natural ability, I really think you could beat him out. We can even start training next week if you want. You know, I was eighth in state in gymnastics for my high school, too. Would that help, or...? That's one of those things that you should probably just keep to yourself. Just think about it, okay? I'm serious. And you know I'm never serious about anything. I don't know. Might be transferring next year to play ball somewhere else. Hey, thanks for bringing me out here. Had a good time. Just think about it. Just think about it. Good morning, Miss Williams. Lovely sermon today, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was so insightful. <clears throat> I just love me some Jesus, don't you? Now I know I'm in church, cause honey, 
You look like an angel. I'm so screwed. You may be seated. It's good to see you, man. Yeah, no harm in checking things out. Today's teaching is taken from Proverbs 16, 9. The mind of the man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Oh, I almost forgot. Children, Sunday school teachers, you're dismissed. What are you wearing, dude? I'm so glad you could make it. I know I told you before, but you were pretty amazing in goal yesterday. Um, I'm gonna get something to drink. Be right back. Good morning, everybody. I'm so glad to see you all here today. Does anyone know what this is? A glove! Right. Well, what can I use a glove for? Oh, oh to keep your hands warm. Here, in the snow. Mm -hmm. And to keep your hands not dirty when you're gardening. Right. Can I use this glove right now to dig in the garden? Yeah. No. Then what can I use it for? No. 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 A glove can be used for many things, but it was created to do one thing. <laughs> right now, this glove is empty. But... Now the glove is full and can do what it was created to do. Oh. Our lives are like this glove. When we try and do things on our own, we're empty inside. But when we let God fill us, our lives can be used for the Lord and we can do anything for his glory. Oh, hey Kurt, did you need something? <clears throat> uh, I, I was looking for the bathroom. It's right down the hall on the left. Okay. Thanks. I really had to go. So. Can you hear me? They say at that church that if I give you my life, you'll fix it. I don't have much to give. But I do have this. This is all I've got. And you can have it. This is my life. Take it, but please, just give me a sign that I'm on the right path. Hey, Dad. Ah, glad you could make it, son. We only have a few minutes to go over these transfer applications before that shipping bill comes to a vote. Let's talk about where you want to transfer. I think I found a few schools close by that would be just perfect. Dad, you're gonna think this is nuts, but I'm gonna stay, at least for one more semester. But what about your athletics? Well, that's just it. I'm thinking about trying out for the school soccer team this summer. What? That's the most outrageous idea I have ever heard. I knew you'd think it was crazy. Get your head out of the clouds, Kurt. This 
is reality, not some half-cocked, irresponsible, foolish idea about trying to make it in a sport you've never even played before. Dad, I'm serious, and I have played before. Do you remember that game with the frat team? Some of those guys thought I was pretty good. I saw you in that frat game. Quite frankly, if I had known you were actually taking it seriously out there, I would have been a bit embarrassed. Come on, that was just the first half. Once I caught on, I really started to do well. I really think I have a shot at this. Come on, Kurt. No one just walks onto a college team after only a few months of playing a sport. That's stupid. Just one more semester. I'll even help out with mom a little more. Fine. It's your life. You want to ruin it, go ahead. I don't have time for any more of this nonsense. I've got to go take care of my real job in the real world. Maybe I can get you an internship on the hill or something. Al, open up. It's Kurt. Open up, man. Gotta get going. Wake up, sunshine. Let's go. There he is. Let's go. If I'm gonna have a shot at this, we gotta start now. Shots. Dude. I'm a little early for that. What are you talking about? <laughs> Shots. A shot. As in a chance at making the team. You said you thought I could do it, right? <sighs> yeah, I did. I mean, <sighs> what I meant to say. And you said we start training this week, remember? Did I? Well, if I did, I did not mean at six in the morning. Come on, man. Where's your dedication? Seriously, let's go. All right, all right. Just give me a minute. All right, hurry up. What have I gotten myself into? You guys need a goalkeeper? Nah, man, we're good. We're good, thank you. Hey. Hey, man. You guys need a goalkeeper? Nah, man, we're in the middle of a game. Hey, you need a goalkeeper? Yeah, man. Take it over. If we really believe that there is a God, if we really believe that there is a heaven and a hell, 
then we'll stop living our lives for our own glory and live for the glory of the Lord. It is only then that we will be able to push through our trials, push through our pain, and realize that just as Jesus laid down his life for us, in the end, none of our suffering will be worthy to be compared to the magnificent glory that is to be revealed to us. Are you ready for the big day? Yeah. Okay, let's go. What are you talking about? You need a pair of these. Thanks, man. This means more to me than you'll ever know. They're just gloves. Looks like he gained some weight. <laughs> yeah. I heard he was boozing up all summer long. He's hardly done any training. He thinks just because he made all south last season, he can do whatever he wants. Looks like you actually have a shot at this thing. Who are you? Uh, Kurt Kuykendall. I'd like to try out, sir, if that's all right with you. Well, we have all the players we need right now. We're not accepting any walk-ons. No, look, just give me a chance, all right? You won't be sorry. How long have you been playing soccer? Well, for about three months. But I've been training hard every day. With all due respect, lad, this is ridiculous. If you want to get into soccer, there are plenty of good rec teams in the area. Now, I have a practice to run. Coach! Wait. This is the goalkeeper Flip and I were talking to you about. This is my friend Kurt Kuykendall. Just give him a chance. You won't regret it. Besides, it won't hurt to give Bruce a little healthy competition. Fine. I'll see what you can do. If you stink, you're gone, understand? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, boys! Let's see this is Well done. Most of you have worked hard all week. I'll be posting the final squad outside my door tomorrow morning. Starters for this weekend's game against the Cavaliers will be clearly marked. If your name's not on the list, or if you're not starting, I'll be happy to talk it over with you. But our decisions about this team are final. That's all. Unless it's a dude doing God, move, guys. Let's see. I don't know how that guy made the team. You gotta be kidding. Yo, hey, you need to calm down. I'm you not gonna calm easy. down, Flip. Coach, we need to talk. Yeah, baby, I knew we could do it. Did I tell you? 
did I tell you? I can't believe this. Congratulations, man. Now, you've got to get your head on straight before tomorrow's game against the Cavs. Are you seriously going to let that scrub start over me? He's been playing soccer for, what, three months? I was all south last year. I don't care if you're all American. You've got to earn your spot on this team, just like everyone else. This is my team. We're going to do it my way until you shape up your act. Kurt will be our starter. This is such a bunch of crap, and you know it. I'm the best keeper you got, coach. Either you get rid of Kuykendall or I quit. There's the door. You can't be serious. I said there's the door. I don't play those kinds of games. Fine. Fine, but don't go crying to me when you guys lose this weekend. And lose bad. Kuykendall. Looks like you're a man. He'll be the Iron Curtain coach. Nothing gets by. I certainly hope so. I just lost an all-South goalkeeper over some lunatic sophomore who's only been playing soccer for three months. You better not let me down. I'll do my best, coach. All right, guys, bring it in. Let's go. Whatever you do, don't underestimate these blokes. They are tough, gritty, and passionate about the game. Kaikendor, we are counting on you. All right, boys, bring it in. Let's go. Eagles on three. One, two, three. Eagles! Let's go, guys. Boys. <laughs> I can't take goal kicks. I don't know how. I don't believe this. This is embarrassing. is a rookie. He doesn't even know how to take a goal kick. Now, you boys can do better than this. Let's go out and win this game. Let's go. This is ridiculous, the way this thing's going. All right, boys. The momentum is back on our side. Let's show them what this team is really all about. And keep the ball in their end of the field. Out you go. All right, let's bring it in. Eagles on three. One, two, three. Eagles!
Kuykendall, a freshman basketball player last year, recently took up soccer and has showed amazing aptitude. He's improving every day, and he's very dedicated, says Ryan. Kurt has everything he needs. Height, courage, and he reads the game well. <laughs> All right, oh, here we go. <clears throat> Eagle soccer squad stuns Cavaliers. Al Ross tallies twice in a 3-1 victory. Oh, dear. You are not going to believe this one. What? Another shot of me lying on the ground, staring at the back of the net? No. No, I'm going to check this out. Agnesi Allegan's vicious rumors. Which adorable Eagle soccer player is currently available? Our sources tell us that an unidentified goalkeeper is keeping solitary company with his shin guards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not a chance, my friend. Let me read it. No. I'm blowing this up and I'm posting it all over campus. Really? Just let me read it. No. Ser Dude, it is about time that you get a girl. Seriously. What are you gonna do about Sherry? You gotta man up. Come on. Bruce is graduating this spring. He's probably gonna pop the question any day. Wait. You really haven't heard? What? They're engaged? No, nah, man. She cut the Bruce loose. What? Do not kid around with me. Are you serious? I'm not kidding. It's over. I think you should go for it. Huh. Well, you know what that means. Goodbye, Shin Gods. <laughs> this year's most valuable player goes to a young man who had 10 shutouts this season. And after only playing soccer for less than a year, he's become one of the best college goalies I have ever seen with the potential to be the best in the East Coast. I give you our MVP, all Middle Atlantic conference goalkeeper, Kurt Kuykendall. <laughs> all the best, Kurt. Thank you. I expect a bright future from you. Wow, thank you. This is a great honor. I'll do my best to make you and the university proud, Coach. Thanks again. That concludes tonight's ceremonies. Thank you all for your hard work this season. We're so very proud of you. Have a good, safe night. I'm really proud of you, dude. Thanks, man. Right. Sure. Sorry, I gotta go. But I'll All see right. you later. Hey, thanks okay. for coming. Well hey. deserved, buddy. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks, dude. Hey. It's now or never. <laughs> what? Are you chicken? Are you a little, a little baby chick? Huh? Tweet, 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 tweet. Shut up. Shoot, you don't score. Sherry! Oh, hey, Kurt. Hey, I was gonna ask you about your awards. Can I see them? Oh, they're nothing. Well, nothing at all like MVP or all conference. Come on, you're being modest. Let me see them. They're just my letters in cheerleading and swimming. Letters in two sports? That's impressive. Thanks. Cool. Well, uh, I should get going, but I guess I'll, I'll see you around. Uh, okay. Nice flyby. <gasps> That was pathetic. I got nervous, okay? 
I'll make my move next time. Dad, Mom, you won't believe the night I had. Well, at least somebody's happy. Be careful. Today would have been Millie's birthday. You think I can't hear you? Like you really care. You didn't even remember until I reminded you. Neither one of you. That's not true. It's like he never existed at all. Admit it. All you ever loved was your precious golden boy. And now not even he is good enough for you. Mom, stop. Stay out of this, Kurt. Nobody asked you for your opinion. I've had all I can take for tonight, Marcy. I'm going upstairs. I've got an important phone call that I'm expecting. Go ahead. Run away, coward! Run away like you always do! Dad, wait. I just came by to tell you what my soccer coach said. When will you stop it with all this soccer nonsense? No one even cares about soccer. You don't get it. This isn't just some hobby I've picked up. I've learned a lot since that day, and not only did I make the team, but... Look, that's great, son, really, but I've got to take this call and then get to bed. Let's do lunch and you can tell me all about it. MVP, Mom. All conference, too. Good game, bro. Thanks, man. You too. Sherry. Um, I gotta go. I'll see you later. Thanks for coming. I couldn't miss this game. Well, especially after everyone kept telling me how amazing a season you've had. You did really great. Uh, listen, Sherry, there's, there's been something I've been meaning to ask you. Sure. Um, Walter Mason with the U.S. Olympic Committee. Great play out there tonight. Thank you, sir. It's an honor. Yeah, and it was all mine. When Coach Ryan asked me to come here tonight, I didn't think someone who had played soccer for less than three years could possibly play at this level, but now I'm a believer. On the basis of this game and your shutout record this year, I'm recommending you for All-American. Wow, uh, thank you, sir, I, I appreciate it. I'd also like you to try out for the US Olympic team in two weeks. Would that fit your schedule? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Great, great, you got my card there. Give me a call this week. I'll send you all the info. Okay. I'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you. A shot at the Olympic team. I can't wait to tell my dad. Kurt, that's amazing. I'm so impressed with how far you've come with this soccer thing. Hey, Sherry. <laughs> you know, Kurt is really good at basketball, too. If you're looking for a rebound. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Oh, that was <laughs> awkward. Um, uh, while we're on the topic, how do you feel? Do you want to join me at the tavern? Are you asking me out? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I am. Okay. But I mean, if you don't want to, it's... Wait, did you just say okay? Just pick me up at eight. <laughs> okay. See 
Well, I'm pretty beat up from the game, but do you want to dance? Um, that's okay. Come on, it'll be fun. Go, Mr. All American. Sorry. This isn't exactly how I planned it. Do you try and plan everything in your life? I used to. Things were so crazy at home, it was nice to have at least something planned out, you know. But what about you? I mean, what brought you to the school? Well, I was at tech, but I got really homesick. You mean you actually missed your family? Yeah, we're really close. But I left for another reason. I kind of followed my boyfriend. Bruce? Let's not talk about him right now. Yeah, whatever happened between you two? I make up my excuses. I fall off the face. All my resolve There is nothing Nothing Left Look, I'm sorry for bringing it up I just want to know It's simple, really Long distance was one thing But being together all the time Made me realize that We didn't want the same things in life Like what? Everything Marriage, family, lots of kids, <laughs> faith. I didn't want to spend all my time waiting and hoping that he'd suddenly change. <clears throat> you, you had lint on your shirt. Oh, no, you're right. I mean, that makes sense. Thank you. It's always good to be on the same page especially about things that matter. Like soccer? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, soccer's up there. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Who is it? Oh, it's my dad. Um, I, I completely forgot to tell him about the Olympic trial. Call him back. Now? You sure? Just be a minute. Just needed those. Dad? Dad? Just needed those. Yeah, get mom on the line too. You guys aren't gonna believe this. I have a tryout for the Olympic soccer team in two weeks. Yes, mom, soccer is an Olympic sport. Look, I told you this isn't just some Dad, you know as well as I do that I've learned a lot since then. I know. I get it, okay? But I have a shot at making all American. Dad, an Olympic... Do you understand? An Olympic scout asked me to try out next weekend. Well, this isn't just about you. Yes, sir. I said, yes, sir. I think that's fair. Good night. What happened? Well, he said that this is my last shot. If I don't make the team, then I'm done in soccer. Then it's time to start a real life. So, make the team. So you ready for some more dancing? Sure, but only if you promise not to step on my toes. I can't guarantee that. in a 
comical crowd. I smirk at the table and I chuckle out loud. I still wouldn't fall short of my love for you. Kurt Kuykendall. Oh uh, yeah, Kuykendall, Region 1. Your team's in red over there. First game starts in a half hour. Good luck. Thank you, Good luck, number 31. Show us what you've got. clean and show us the best you've got because you only have three games to prove you have what it takes to represent the United States of America. Best of luck. I hope to see you in the coming months. Let's go. Doctor over here, call an ambulance. Kurt, hi, Dr. Melanie Jeske. I'll be your orthopedist today. So what's the deal, Doc? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you have a fractured ankle. So we're going to put you in a cast, give you some crutches, and you should be able to go home. Well, how long are we talking here? 
About six to eight weeks, and that's a conservative estimate. Six to eight weeks? No, no, I'm sorry. I I've got Olympic tryouts this weekend. Olympic tryouts? Yeah, for soccer. They just asked me to try out for the team. Well, you're going to need to call your coach. You won't be attending any Olympic tryouts this weekend. At least not on the field anyway. It's going to be a good two months before you even get the cast off, let alone play any soccer. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. Well, I will be back in a minute. The nurse is going to come in and get you set up for your cast. We are going to need to reposition that ankle, so prepare yourself. Might be a rough afternoon. Can I help you? I'm here to see Kurt. Is he in? He's in, but he's not seeing anyone. I I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be a bother. Um, I'm sure he's mentioned me before. I'm Sherry. His girlfriend. I just spoke to him on the phone. Well, never told me he had a girlfriend. Now is not a good time. Mom, who is it? It's nothing, honey. Just some girl. Sherry, hey, it's okay, Ma, it's Sherry. You know, the one I've been trying to tell you about? Can I come in for a second? Actually, we should probably get going. Bye, Mom. We'll be back in a little while, all right? We're just gonna go for a walk. A walk? Kurt, what about your ankle? And I need you to stay home more. Be back later, Mom. Fine, but don't expect me to be waiting up for you. Now you see why we never hang out at my house. <laughs> What are you going to do now? I don't know. My dad thinks that I should just forget soccer and get a real job. I'm starting to think he's got a point. Kurt, it's a broken ankle. Why would you even talk about quitting? There's no way you can give up now. Sure there is. Kurt, you cannot quit. Believe me, I don't want to. Which is why I need you by my side, okay? Now more than ever. I'm with you no matter what. You know that. All I mean is that I thought you were the kind of guy who finishes what you start. And if a stupid broken ankle is going to make you give up... I'm sure, that's enough. No, it's not enough. The Kurt I know wouldn't even talk about quitting. The Kurt I know wouldn't give up even though everyone said it couldn't be done. He believes he was made to do something bigger than himself and has the guts to pursue that dream. If you quit now, then they were right about you. You're just like everyone else. Kurt. Look at me. I don't care if you're a broken down, has-been athlete or a president of the United States. I love you for the man you are today, right now. And I love you for the man you will be tomorrow. I'm not going anywhere, unless it's with you. So, I was thinking, what would you say about you and me getting married sometime. Is 
that a proposal? Yeah. Well, then, yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Looks like your ankle's healing nicely. Yeah. So, Kurt, I have some great news for you. Well, I've got some great news for you, too. But you first. Well, it's taken me a few weeks, but uh, I made a bunch of calls and pulled a lot of strings. They didn't have any openings, but it seems I can get you an internship on the Hill with Congressman Baker at the end of summer. <clears throat> wow, Dad. I really appreciate that, but I might be a little busy this summer. Sherry and I are getting married. What? When? August 25th, if the church is free. Well, this is not a decision to be entered into lightly. No, sir. Sherry's parents have already given their blessing. How do you plan to provide for a family? Well, actually, I've been thinking a lot about that. This came in the mail today. And it seems that they found a new Olympic coach. They're retrying out the entire team. Oh, Kurt, not soccer again. Look where all that Olympic talk got you last time. My old coach, you know Coach Ryan, he put in a good word for me. They want me to come to tryouts this fall. And if I make the team, I got a good shot at going pro. Will you stop it with the Olympics already? Kurt, get your head out of the clouds. How can you possibly get married and stay married if you don't have a real job? Trust me, Kurt. Love is not enough. I've got all that figured out. Sherry's almost done with her teaching degree, and I recently picked up a part-time job as a PE teacher. Physical education. Kurt works hard at everything he does. You won't have to worry about us. Sherry, you're a very nice girl, but I don't think you understand the situation here. Kurt, can I see you in the other room, please? Anything you have to say to me, you can say in front of Sherry. Now. You made me a promise. Why do you hate soccer so much? It's what I'm good at. You may not believe me, but I do love you. And that's why I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that doesn't happen to your marriage because you're too busy chasing a dream to provide for your family. Look, I am not you, Dad, all right? And Sherry, she's not Mom. I thought you'd be happy for us. Thanks for dinner, Mom. It was great. I have to go. I have to do this. What about us? What about your father? You'll never know the favors I had to call in. My reputation, my career is on the line. Yeah? So is mine. Come on, Sherry. It's time to go.
Kurt Kuykendall. Oh yeah, Kuykendall. I remember you. You're that guy who uh, broke his leg, right? Man, that's got to mess with your head a bit, doesn't it? Well, you don't have to worry about me. I'm back now, stronger than ever. So where is everyone? Well, you're here uh, two hours early. Yeah, but that, that's all right. Hey, why don't you give him number one? First one here, number one is yours, Keeper. Thank you. simply don't need you here now. This is your final shot at this. If you quit now, then they were right about you. He's fearless, but ah, it's too bad. I had him at the top of the list, but I guess that's it for him. Kate! I think you're done, son. Besides, I'm okay. Come on, let's play. Let's do this. Hey, Kendall. There's someone waiting to see you out in the hall. Make it quick. You guys were gonna make it. Uh, Kurt, uh, it's hard for me to admit when I'm wrong, but I'm glad you persisted. Besides, couldn't miss a chance to use this. <laughs> this is your day, baby. Go get him, okay? never been more proud of anything or anyone in my life than I am of you, son. Well, the text someone once told me, if you don't shoot, you don't score. Why don't you try moving it a little to the right? No, no, to my right. Now move that left one back some. My left? Yeah, yeah, your left back. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, there it is. And the goal for the United 
States from Fairfax, Virginia, America's soccer wonder, Kurt Eichendahl. Woo! Dude, he's right there. This is? No, no, no. Get... A lot of pressure on their both. Eichendahl. That's for sure. Sexy, sexy man. Wait, well, you can really see him? No, pressure. don't. You'll need all the boys he can muster move. today. Christian home, and I always thought that I was a Christian. I did, um, in eighth grade, go through my catechism class and publicly confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior in front of the congregation, and I truly believed it with all my heart. Uh, when I went through high school, I'd say I became a bit more worldly and wanted to fit in with the rest of the students. And when I went off to college, though, that was the chance to really see that my life wasn't quite centered on God. It was centered on myself and that I was on the throne, not uh, Jesus Christ. And that is when I realized that I was missing a personal relationship with Jesus. I grew up as a little boy in and out of church. You know, we went to different denominations. I actually went through the catechism of uh, the Anglican Church and became an acolyte, but I never met Jesus through the process. My idol, which was sports, God uh, allowed that to crash when I was cut off the high school basketball team and, and then cut again off my, uh, my college team to redirect my life. And it, it, was, it was because of that that in October of 1969 that before going to bed, I got down on my knees and I said, Jesus, if you will, come into my life. Forgive me and um, see if you can do something with me. And um, you know, my life changed for that at that point. And it's uh, never been the same. He has been there, you know, all along the way.
Wow, guys. He... Wow, guys. He sure blew it. My friend was in such a hurry to buy his sister a present that he ran his bike full speed into a parked Mercedes. It was horrible. Boy, that owner sure was mad. Has something dumb like that ever happened to you, even though you didn't mean to do anything bad? I can think of a story of a pretty hardcore guy who thought he was doing good, but got into a lot of trouble. That was a long time ago, but all over the world, people still talk about him. Rome, about 1,940 years ago. Hey, Paul. Come in. I'm sure you also want to know why I'm in Rome. Half the city is talking about you. I was taken captive in Jerusalem and turned over to the Romans because I proclaimed what Israel has been waiting for. The Messiah, the promised Savior. What did the Romans do with you? They interrogated me for a long time, but found no single reason to condemn me to death. And how about the friendly guy at the door? <laughs> House arrest. The Jews protested against my release. The only way out now is a mercy petition to the Emperor. Tell us what's with your new faith. Why is it so important and to you? And why are the Romans scared slow of it? Slow down, slow down. Well, to get a better understanding of it all, you should hear what a terrible person I used to be. Yes, please uh, tell us. Yes, please tell us. We have time. Back then, my name was Saul. And I witnessed the conviction of a brave Christian. This young man's name was Stephen, and he had the gift of healing. He openly told everyone about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So, you claim we actually crucified the Messiah? Stephen, just the fact that you even dare use the word Messiah is blasphemy. And blasphemy is always punished with death. Stone him. I see heaven opening up, and Jesus at the right hand of God. Come with us, Saul. Now you can show what the faith of our fathers is really worth. I can't wait. Give me the stones. It'll be your turn soon enough. I have another job for you, don't worry. Okay, whatever you want. Watch this stuff and don't let anyone to touch it, okay? Yeah, yeah, no problem. I can do that. Next time, it's going to be your turn, I wouldn't though. mind if it were tomorrow. You blasphemer! You're doomed! You traitor! Lord Jesus, please receive my soul. What impertinence! Lord, do not punish them for this sin. Well, that was it. I'm glad I can serve a righteous cause. We need men like you to wipe out this erroneous belief. I thought I was serving a good cause by trying to capture and punish as many Christians as possible. But I was totally wrong. Into the dungeon with you, Riff Raff. I will put Have you behind mercy. bars. We didn't do anything wrong, Saul. Why are you putting us in prison? This must be a mistake. Help us, Jesus, our poor children. Scum of our nation, as surely as my name is Saul, I will get all of you one by one. Many Christians are made to suffer. at the High Priest of Jerusalem. An authorization for what? Because I want to pursue the Christians. Many of them have fled north. It's a long way to Damascus. But I want to get rid of them all. All right. The Jewish community in Damascus should support you. And I'm going to need two guards to accompany me. All right. Go to the temple guard and tell them to assign you two men. Thank you. I'm sure I will do you credit. He is unstoppable. Ha! Damascus! Damascus, four miles. What's wrong with you? Hurry up. This isn't a field trip. Saul, why are you persecuting me? Lord, who are you? I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But now get up and go to this city. There you will find out what you should do. What was that? Did you see someone around? No, that somehow came from above. Are you hurt, Saul? Everything is okay. It's just that I... I... I can't see anymore. I'm blind! Oh God, I'm blind! Come, take my arm. I'm blind. Damascus isn't far, Saul. 
You can recover in Judas's hostel. Three days later. Ananias. Yes, Lord. Get up and go straight street to the house of Jesus and ask for Saul from Tarsus. Did you say Saul? In a dream he saw you come to him and lay hands on him so that he could see again. But Lord, I have heard how much evil he has done in Jerusalem. Everybody knows him. And now he is here in order to arrest everyone who professes to know you. And I'm sure he will immediately arrest me. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Just go. I've chosen him to be my messenger. He will proclaim my name in many countries. All right. I'm already on my way. Come in. Hi, Brother Saul. The Lord sent me here to be with you. Jesus, who appeared to you on the road. That true? Yes, Saul. Don't worry. You shall see again. <gasps> I, I can see again. Oh, I want to serve the Lord with all my heart. Baptize me. You're really serious, Saul? Indeed I am. And tomorrow at this time I will be at the synagogue telling about Jesus. There! You can see again? How did that happen? My Lord Jesus just healed me. And we're going to continue. Very soon. But now you two can go back to Jerusalem. I don't need you anymore. Uh, but how, how you, you can... Send the high priest my best regards and tell him I will continue the fight, but this time on the side of Jesus Christ and with the weapons of love. We'll deliver the message, don't worry. But since Christ came, the old law is no longer the way to God. The only thing that counts before God is faith. What is he doing? Does this Saul want to pull our leg? It is in silent to interpret the scriptures. First he persecutes all Jesus' followers in Jerusalem, and now he has apparently become one of them himself. Unbelievable. God is always with us, so tell me who can harm us. He didn't even spare his only son, Jesus Christ, but let him die for all of us. It's unacceptable. No way. We can no longer tolerate Saul preaching in the synagogue. He's confusing all the young people. Not only them. Paul is becoming a danger to our religion. This is a clear case of blasphemy. We will arrest him and stone him. This has to stop. Yes. And as quickly as possible. And my Lord Jesus, I thank you that with all my heart, you are my... Saul, you must flee. You are in big danger. Ananias, go slowly. Who says that? In the city. I heard it. They want to condemn and stone you. You have to flee. If it's God's will, I'll go to my death courageously professing until the last minute that Jesus... Please, lived. don't be so stubborn. They have set up guards everywhere to catch you. Let's go. In that case, I can't flee anyway. Yes, there is one other possibility. Come with me. If you stay alive, you can bless a lot more people. Well, maybe you're right. I'm so happy, even as it's always been easy to live as a Christian. But Jesus has changed my life radically. Everything I did wrong, everything he has forgiven. Any questions? Yes, I no, do. I do. Take it easy. I was first. Okay, okay. Paul was not released until two years later. Paul kept telling about what was to be the most important event in his life, his amazing encounter with Jesus. He was so excited about Jesus that he traveled long distances to tell people about him. However, on his journeys, things didn't always go smoothly. Once it looked like Jesus had forgotten him and left him all alone. Well, Paul had no idea what he should do. Somewhere in Turkey. Paul, I'm fed up and exhausted, and my feet hurt. 
let's go and set up camp for the night under that tree over there. I'm tired too. Every hundred miles I need new sandals. And we still haven't arrived at the city where God wants us. This is really starting to get tiring. Oh, Silas. But it's true. If things keep on like this, the sandal makers will be the only ones to profit. <laughs> I too would rather proclaim the good news of Jesus in the next city. But it is if God has been holding my mouth shut. Why would he be doing that? <laughs> Maybe the sandal makers prayed for more business. Ha! <laughs> Probably you're right, Paul. Where do we try to go next? Truss. Oh. And how far is that still? <sighs> Don't ask. Maybe we can hitchhike for part of the way. Thanks for taking us My with you. My sandals and I are so grateful. There is Jurus. Come, we can make it before dark. Oh, I'll come. But you'll also have to persuade my sandals. May God protect you. Hey, Silas, go in God's strength. <laughs> Send us a letter. Silas, wake up. Now I know. What? Who? Can we finally talk about Jesus? Soon. In my dream last night, I saw a man from Macedonia. He stood on the shore and shouted, Come over and help us. Oh. Silas, this is the answer to all our prayers. But Macedonia is in Greece, on the other side of the Great Sea. It's too far. Who cares? Jesus knows that. So let's go to Europe. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go to Europe. Silas. Hmm? The coast of Macedonia. From there, it isn't much farther to get to Philippi. There we can finally talk about Jesus. Hmm. I won't believe it until we get there. Today is the Sabbath, and there are few people who are meeting to pray. Maybe down there at the river. Yes, indeed. Ha! Why don't we start with those people down there, huh? You may be right, but... But... I think there are only women. Do you believe that Jesus died for you on the cross, and that because of that you can belong to God forever? Do you believe it? Yes, I want to be baptized in his name. Me too. Me too! Hmm, would you like to see into your future, gentlemen? For a bit of money, our maiden is at your service. No, thank you. The present is here and that's enough for us. These men are the servants of the Most High God. They will show you the way to salvation. Those are two misers who just want to hold on to their stinking silver pieces. You serve the Most High God and show others the way to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her, you fortune-telling spirits. Leave her alone. What have you done to her? She is healed. What? What? Does that mean she can't tell the future anymore? She is no longer under bondage. She has been set free. You! You have ruined our business! You will pay for this! Ouch! In front of town magistrate in Philippi. These men are As causing trouble in our city! They are too! They want to enforce rules that will go we against our law and here. order. Them out. They're not welcome Send here. them out of town! Get them out of the city! 
What impertinence! Don't you understand? They are not belong here! Uh, uh. Let them feel what is right and wrong in Philippi, and then throw them into prison. Give them the full treatment. They will like it. <laughs> and if you cause any trouble, you'll be sorry. <laughs> I have my methods. Well, Paul, I guess things aren't going so smoothly in Europe either. God knows what he's doing. In such situations, Singing aloud helps. It's your turn. Give us a song. You mean we should actually start praising God in our situation? God knows what he's doing. Just trust him. Trust him? Well, maybe you're right. <laughs> Do you hear that? Yes. It's a religious song. Now they're trying to bring even more trouble. An earthquake! By Zeus and all the gods. All the prisoners are gone. I'm... I'm ruined. May the gods have mercy on me. Don't harm yourself. All of us uh, are still here. Uh, 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 what did you say? Lights. Who... Who are you? You must be gods or angels. Well, we certainly aren't angels. We are messengers of Jesus Christ. Please, please be guest in my house. You saved my life, and I would like to do something for you. Huh. Well, before we get beaten again. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Totally undeserved, out of his mercy, God is willing to forgive our sins because of what Jesus did on the cross. And that is God's plan. Not more, and not less. And tell me, what must I do to be saved, please? Jesus Christ our Lord rose from the dead. If you accept him as your Lord and trust in him, then you and your family will be saved. I want to trust in Jesus and the only Lord and God with all my heart. I want to trust in Jesus. Me too. And I too want to trust in the Lord God. And? Huh. The only Lord and God knows what he's doing. The journey continues. A lot of people became Christians because Paul told them about Jesus. Some of the religious leaders didn't want to hear this and repeatedly tried to silence Paul and even kill him. Things got so bad that Paul asked for the matter to be taken directly to the Roman Emperor. But see for yourselves what happened then. On the journey to Rome. Captain, what's with the wind? If this keeps up, I won't get my prisoners to Rome before winter. It's not my fault. Such a lull is unusual for this time of year. It would be wiser to spend the winter in Crete. It's already the beginning of October, and soon the heavy storms will come. Who is this amateur? And why isn't he tied That's up? Paul. He's to appear before the court in Rome. Don't worry, he's all right. He has my complete trust. Well, in any case, we shall await the awakened fall winds, and we'll be in Bella Italia in no more than three weeks. Ah, uh, I foresee we will encounter a lot of trouble. Yeah, right. We should spend the winter here, Captain Julius. Not only the ship is in danger, but also the lives of all the people on board. Did you hear what he said? You are responsible for the lives of almost 200 passengers. Traveling of landlubbers. You shall see. As soon as this lull ends, we will speedily reach the coast of Rome. <laughs> the 
captain was right. We're really picking up speed now. You can say that again. Hold the course! We are drifting off! The storm is way too strong! There is too much pressure on the mainsail! Quick! Shorten the sails! To the messengers! Shorten the mainsail quickly! The yawl's rope is ripping! Without the yawl, we're lost! Secure the yawl! It's too heavy! Take the grapple and throw it overboard! Come We're on. never gonna make come it! On. Come on, come on! This is no birthday party! Man overboard! He is holding on to the yawl! We have him! Thank you, my god. Captain, we are quickly drifting southwest towards Africa! Ah! Throw out the drift anchor! We have too much water on board! Go and get the buckets and start! Watch out the anchor! Julius! Julius! Can't your soldiers help bail the water? Most of them are seasick. Captain! The ship's freight also contains a few marble columns. They could come loose and ram a hole in the ship's side. Throw the freight overboard. What? I said throw the freight overboard. In case you haven't noticed, this is a matter of life and death. One week later. Don't give up your courage. Everyone will stay alive. Only this ship will be lost. Why are you so suddenly optimistic? During the night, an angel of the Lord came to me. Just what we need. And he said to me, do not be afraid, Paul. You will tell Caesar about Jesus and God will also save the others because of you. You will be stranded on an island. I won't believe it until I see it. Why don't you sit down and spare your strength? It will happen just as the angel of the Lord has said. Fourteen days later. A seagull. I... I think I heard a seagull. Captain, there has to be land nearby. Throw out the plumb line! Captain, we have the bottom again. Twenty fathoms. Great. Keep measuring, but be careful. There could be rocks. Prepare the stern anchor. Only 15 fathoms. Come on, hurry up! Throw out the stern anchor! At dawn, we shall see if this Paul is right. Or if it's only a reef in the middle of the ocean that is making a fool of us. What's wrong with you? Go to Dolph. We're throwing out the second bower. The crew is trying to escape with the yawl. Without these seamen, we have no chance of being saved. Soldiers, sneak to the bow and cut the yawl's ropes. Quickly. Yes, sir. Stay put in the name of Caesar. You would like that, wouldn't you? You fool. You could have come with us. There! Land in sight! It's true. An island. Just like the angel predicted. But we haven't grounded yet. Helmsman! Are we going to make it there? We lost our yawl. The mast is also gone. But with the foresail, we could let ourselves drift. First, we must somehow get the anchors out of the rocks. Cut the anchors! Now! It's all or nothing! We are starting to move! But without an anchor, we are at the complete mercy of the ocean! Our fate was removed from our hands a long time ago. It is looking good. We will be able to land over there. That should be an ideal place to repair the ship. A sandbank! Into the ocean from here, we can swim. Excuse me, sir. Shouldn't we kill the prisoners? They will try to flee. No, they are under my protection. Take off their shackles. The first ones for you to reach the island will receive them when they get there. We have survived. Praise be to our God. They have already reached the island. Praise be to our God. Rescued.
on the island Malta. Go ahead. We all need it. Thank you. I will go and help collect wood. It should keep us warm for a while. Soon his arm will become thick and swollen. Yeah, he will die from that. He survived the shipwreck, but I believe God still wants to punish him. He must him. be a murderer. When the poison reaches his heart, it's over. Too bad for him. He should have been dead. I don't know. Maybe he isn't human. You mean... Yes. Maybe he is a god. A god on our island? Quick, go get Publius. We need to worship him. But we don't even know his name. We will just have to find out. All right. <clears throat> we wanted to... Welcome. We wanted to... Yes, we just wanted to say welcome because we... Don't um, have a god with us very often. Actually, never. Which god are you? I know the only god who made heaven and earth and also your island. And I know his son, Jesus Christ. He is the one I serve. But I'm a totally normal person, just like you. My name is Paul, and I come from Taurus. I wanted to see this for myself. Is that true? That a god is stranded on our island? Almost. God brought us safely to shore. We were sailing to Rome in a freight ship, and were caught in a terrible storm for almost two weeks. This island has saved our lives. Praise our Lord Jesus Christ. You have gone through a lot. May I invite you to be my guests tonight? And you have to tell me about everything. The storm, the snake, your god, and about this Jesus. I'll do it gladly. Maybe this is exactly why we landed here. Welcome to Malta. More people come to know Jesus 